Hello everyone in chat. Sorry for the wait, but we are back again for our second draft cup. Um it's great to see you all in chat. Um we're hoping to get things underway as soon as possible now. You're here with uh me, the Moo, and Nightwing. Hello everyone, how are you? Welcome to the second draft cup. I hope you're all going to enjoy it and I hope it's bigger and better than it was last time out. Oh yeah, for sure. We've uh, had an increase of nine teams, so we've got 25 teams to you, for you today fighting it out. Um, we won't be having the graphic up on screen showing all the team who's in each team, but we do have a link in our panels if you're interested in seeing all of the teams and all of who's playing today. Yes, and we are about to begin as teams get ready to complete their round one matches. And first on stream, um, remind me again who, who it was, Moo? Who's on stream again? We have... If you forgot. I, I, I do love these names. Um, launch point are great at coming up with names. We have the Thick Thigh Warriors versus Barbie's Dreamhouse. Yes, two very creative team team names and hopefully they pick some very creative comps and and give us that a good show for the first round of the launch point draw cup definitely definitely interesting to see uh what sort of comps come up um and our first map we have is zones ink blot which is a favorite of mine i do quite like the map yep zones on ink blot a very a very good map to start your start your tournament on really very that very that congested map it easy 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 to get into mid really and and it really that relies on co coordination that i'm trying to get, uh, get get the best out of your comps and get those picks ready definitely uh with the slayer's job pushing up onto the plat keeping an eye on the right side there's a lot of think about on ink block there is for sure and i'm sure Teams are ready to teams are ready to come and get in. I'm sure. Uh, uh, so let me just have a readout for you who we have um, on the thick thigh warriors. We have zero uh, zero three. We have pulp, kushi, and pan pan. And on Barbie's dream house, we have advocate, vicarious. Uh, Duel and Risky and Splat Squid is attempts up for them at the moment. Yep, and we do have a wide range of um, that of weapons that for everyone to use as well. That I know Splat 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 Squid Splat Splat Squid sorry likes to use um like to use um the blob. So that's going to be very interesting. Go go going into this match for sure. Definitely. Um, the the blob is something that the Japanese do tend to use. It's quite interesting um, to see that they use the comps. Um, they use that quite a fair bit in the, their comps. And while the Western scene tend to think it's a bit of a joke, but in the in the wrong hands, sorry, in the right hands, it, it can be quite scary. Yes, for sure. I'm just wondering. I'm just wondering if he will use that to to, to great to to grade that effectiveness for sure. Uh, the map afterwards we're getting is um, tower control on humpback pump track. That map again is another good one for slayers to push up on. Definitely needs work for all of the teams. Um, from all the team players to really push up and make a solid push. Um, but yeah, we're at the moment, we're still waiting for teams to get into the lobby. Um, we've had a very slow start, unfortunately, but uh, we're working through it.
we are just waiting for teams that we're just we're just having dif- difficulties now. Teams are not sure who to who to, who to join, etc. But we are about to start up and give you guys a very entertaining show for the first round that I'm sure both teams that are raring uh, raring to go. It's definitely been a harder time for the staff at Launch Point. Um, we've, with the increase in players, comes an increase in uh, problems and things to sort out. So we can only hope as we go bigger that you know we're able to manage it, get more staff in if we need, and also um, we hope players understand any delays that we're having and things like that. All, all tournaments have their hiccups. <laughs> Definitely. We're just waiting on one one more player to get in and we will start. And we'll start up very soon, guys. Just to give that predictions that in the chat, if anyone wants to give that predictions that like who's who's gonna win. And Shout out to the 45 watching right now. I'm sure the number that will climb as we get deeper into the tournament today. As the lobby is full, we're just having teams get, get ready and sort out that their comps will be starting once once both parties are ready. Just waiting on some late comments again. This isn't going to be great for their um for their timing. Hopefully, they're able to pull out some uh, quick KOs. Uh, let's see. Definitely, definitely that, these maps as well. That like especially in, in, in like that on zones, you, you, you really that get pinned in spawn that and get camped out. And it, it could be it could be over within within the first minute as well. It takes a lot of coordination to get back in as well, uses of specials and such. Just hope as well this time this time around in the draft card that we gave teams a lot more time to practice and I hope that they've put this time to to great use so we can see that a lot of synergy within the teams. Definitely. It was one of the um, feedback things we had from last time for our first go. Uh, we had mixed feedback in um, saying whether or not teams wanted more or less time to practice. It is a draft after all, so you're not particularly meant to practice with your team. Um, but yep. we have decided to try giving them time this time, and next time we'll be trying a shorter way. A shorter way. So we're always working to try and improve and you really get the formula down for the launch point draft cup. Play is reading up now. Um, hoping to start very soon. Again, very sorry for the wait. And here we go. Here we are. Players we are ready. ready. First match of the launch point draft cup number two. Let's take it away. Interested to see some comps here. We have an Ely of that from Pulp and Splat Squid going with the traditional blob. Interested to see how that how that L3D is going to be used in this. Um, they, they need to him 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 and the junior really need to work together that and try and um, solidify that their dominance in this match. Definitely. I also know that uh, Elita on this map, it's it can be very good because you can get pretty far on um, from your plat, getting the right amount of control. It it allows you to get so much control, and that's a cap on the side of the yellow team. 
Yes, as Barbie's dream house take 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 an early take an early that defeat the two down two down that 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 they were that and the thick fight uh, warriors that are really take it taking it to them now. Seeing the specials come out, we've got uh, the armor and the bomb rush. Not quite enough to perhaps own. Finally, the inkjet comes out, but it might be a slightly too late now, having to back up. They do manage to cap it, though. They do manage that the juniors that we've taken out and and the nose that we've taken out. It's a free free situation now that a zone's contested, and the thick fire warriors get zoned, but need to work down that uh, that and that penalty that to extend their lead in this match. And that's two down on the side of Barbie's dream house now having to back up <laughs> pulling out that bomb rush when the, we've got one player down as you see zero zero three they're trying to make a push onto the plat with pan pan trying to push up take some control of their mid their elisa goes down losing a little range control there yeah as thick fire warriors get it down to 41 that's a commanding lead that that right now but they still have three 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 minutes left that they're down one that we have people jump uh, jump jumping out so 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 barbie's dream house that can really take take the offense that and try game game back lead as the inkjet that gets taken out as well they put the rain in as well trying to double up on specials but uh it might not be enough just the rain the junior and nautilus now both got their specials popping them trying to go for a last minute push they do manage to get it two down this will be their chance to cap and they have capped it the thick fight warriors have got zone back they have a 10 point lead that right now Pen uh, penalties that going down everyone's here that they're, they're trying to that con contest that the platform that the inches that are playing pressure but it gets take taken out and the thick fire warriors are that are up three three to two that right now and they have started to score and they are now extending that that they lead in this match. Yeah, Barbie's dream house now needs to really get their specials together and really make a good push in. The rain they're counteracting uh, some of the ink and the ink jet goes down unfortunately. Can thick fire warriors can't exactly hold the zone to keep extending their lead, but this is uh, Barbie's dream house time to really take out a couple, hopefully, possibly stack them. Unfortunately, they go down and only two left on the side of Barbie's dream house. Yes, and, as and we that's have the that zone cap. Left in this game. The Fig Firers have again capped it. The penalty is going down and surely now that they should just solidify that their lead that and that, that and take this, take this 1-0. But we never know that in Splatoon, and we have just over that a minute left. As zone is being that uh, con uh, uh, contested, Barbie's Dreamhouse is trying to get uh, get it get it back, so, so so they can still steal this win that off of thick thick fire warriors, and they have capped it. But, but but their charger is down. This is their chance now, but it seems like they've put the rain in on the side of thick fire warriors and trying to contest zone now. Can they hold it off to get a good lead? They're, they're two down on the side of Warriors. They might get a chance here, but they go to two down themselves. And they are three down. Just... Barbie's Dreamhouse really need to take it to them now as, as they're scoring. Just over 20 seconds left. Can they do it? The Elisa does take down Jewel, the uh, other sniper. The benefits of having a little bit of range there. Their inkjet goes down as well. This is the Did... Warriors' chance. And it's just one, and then one in the it, and Thick Fire cap, cap the zone that we've just three seconds left, and I think they're gonna hold this. Oh, they were they were nearly about to get it, but they've lost it. And Thick Fire Warriors take this one and zero in a very close contested zones ink block. Barbie's dream that was, was a... so close. Definitely, it was. Uh... One cap coming in, that was a clutch cap. Um, we're now moving on to Tower Control Humpback. Tower Control and Humpback, not, not, not everyone's f first choice on, um, on Humpback Humpback, that's for sure. But 
but I'm sure um, it, it's a very it's a very balanced balanced map um, that the tower does 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 take that weird um, path through the trench up and around the the, the left that the left snipe the snipe area, but I'm, but I'm sure that the back lines that are going to have that are field day today. Definitely. I'm wondering if we, whether we see uh, Pope bring out the Elita again. It definitely had one over in Jewel there in Inkblot. That gave him an advantage. To, uh, Pope managed to get a couple of picks on Jewel, which allowed the Slayers to move around a little bit more as we head into the second match. Teams were very Picked quick. Picked by Warriors. Definitely. Yeah. And that team's ready up, just waiting to see what they have picked as well. Same comp for the Thick Fire Warriors. And as we see Splat, Splat Squid bring out the, the, the Tri Slosher. The Tri Slosher on Humpback is, is pretty good. It, that's just them taking a pick on uh, the T Tech already. Um, it, the verticality allows it to really shine here. Yes, and as teams are just waiting, they have to get picks. Splat, Splat Squid that is sort of over that extended took took out one, giving his giving his team that a chance that to put uh, push the first checkpoint. But they but they've quickly that got taken out, and thick five warriors yeah. that that can now go on the offensive. Stingray comes out from that jump out, m managing to push Pulp off the tower, responds with another Stingray, but is he able to catch Jewel? Thick Thigh Warriors is very pushed up now, but they've not managed to push the tower. But they have Little do they know Spat Squid two. coming up behind. But Debris manages to take out Splatwidge and stop that flank. And Thick Fire Warriors have really taken the first checkpoint and are really pushing it. They are two down, but they are still pushing it all the way to second checkpoint. They're still alive in this one and they still have the tower. They are still trying to push. Barbie's Dream Dreamers really need to have an answer that as they go two down, I'm not sure they could, they, they could come back from this. That after sec, uh, second checkpoint, it's going to be that a big ask for them, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, back to Barbie's dream house, they're two down again. Vicario trying to take tower, manages to get pulp off, giving uh, Barbie's dream house a chance to respond and a chance to come back. But they are two down again. They they're very staggered here. They need to get a little bit more coordinated so they can get a good stop and perhaps a wipe so they can really push back. Yes, that and as they've pushed it, pushed it all the way that to fifteen. That with just over half half of the game left, Barbie's Dreamhouse are really going to have to put on a show for us today to try and get this back that and force a game three from 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 this first round in the launch point draft cup. Definitely, and as I say that the uh, Barbie's Dreamhouse managed to push out, take mid, really take control, and push three of the thick thigh warriors back, but they weren't man able to take anything from that push, unfortunately. Now looking for picks. They do manage to get two on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors. Now is their chance to push. Spats yes. were taking out the inkjet with a try. Always great to see. <laughs> and they have taken that the first that check, uh, check, uh, checkpoint. Barbie's Dreamhouse that have really um, got 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 control of the map and uh, and are pushing that that they know this is this is their best chance that to get anything from this game. And as they get second checkpoint, I believe that they might be able to do this, but I don't want to curse them. As we as we <laughs> say, commentators curse, but they are pushing to the first checkpoint. They are getting 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 15. They're almost there. They just get on it. There we and go. And they have got leads. And they have got first And checkpoint. three down. And they might they get might the KO here. And they have, what a comeback. That was Barbie's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful comeback. Uh, from the side of Barbie's dream house really took control in that second half um, pushed back the thick thigh warriors and then got the picks they needed to move forward again that was a really commanding push from Barbie's dream house that was very very good to force a game three that was really inspiring 
And as we go to game three, which is Rainmaker on Manta Maria, this map and mode combination, it can really be over very quickly if if you get wiped. Teams do need need to be able to just bide their time that and make sure they they don't get wiped if they get if they get picked picked once conserve their their pushes that that really make make sure um to watch the flank on the left hand side going up to the bunker definitely it can cost you uh dearly if you get a wipe on a uh, Manta Maria it can really stagger things for you you do have a sort of advantage coming back in, staring down uh, from the bats, but teams can easily take control of that and take control of the court in front of spawn. And it's such a short distance to run, there's every chance they may not make it back. And our teams are ready, in we are about to go. To our final match of round one. Teams already. Flat Squid has got the blob back, and I think they are pretty much the same comps that they used for the first map, which was on zones on ink block. And interested to see how how they get paint down that, and who 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 strikes first. Advocate going for that early push onto the bunker, hanging onto that wall, trying to get a flank or a pick. Um, while the Cario they're popping their armor. The T Tech goes down on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors, giving. It Barbie's Dreamhouse a chance to push now. Let's yes. see what they can do. And they have pushed it all the way to 54 and they go down. That is a pretty solid push, but it's easy to come back to, to, to come back from that. But they do get pop, but they're not able to capitalize on it. Definitely. I think uh, the bomb rush being pulled out by Splat Squid there, uh, they managed to push it to 24. That's how volatile Manta Maria is. Splat Squid's pop there, I think it took them by surprise. Um, if you're not wary of whether or not that blob has a bomb, bomb rush, you, you could be caught unawares quite easily. Now two down on either side. Um, I think Thick Thigh Warriors are hoping for a reset now, but they don't have control of mid. Thick Thigh Warriors just need to bide their time. There's still a lot of time left in this match. To get to get back into this, but they do need to stop get getting picked and as they as they go two down. But it is a two v two situation now. But they really need to focus on map uh, map control, getting paint down that are really that coordinating specials that it, it, especially with, with the armor that an inkjet that at their uh, dis disposal. Definitely, and uh, Manta Maria being so short, you do have to bide your time. Uh, to make a sound push here, you have to play it well. And that's a wipe on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors. Can Barbie's Dreamhouse take advantage of this and push it a little bit further? Unfortunately not, leaving a duel to come from the back to pick up that Rainmaker. I feel like they've lost their chance there. Yeah, it, it, was, it, 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 was, it, it was almost that as though they were happy with their push. That they were happy that that with twenty uh, twenty four, but if but if Fix Five Warriors did did go and push that and drop that, their lead could be over. As they are looking looking to do so, that they've got into the street and they push it to forty nine. That is that a good place that to pick it up again. But they don't have have the numbers to continue that this push with just over and, two minutes left in this match. And also the control. You see the. Um... The Thick Thigh Warriors haven't really painted up. Their bunker's not theirs. The far left isn't theirs. The mid is very spotty at the moment. It looks like they're going for a cheese push there. As you love to see. That's Rainmaker yeah. for you. Yes, but are they going to manage to keep this up? No, the uh, TC goes down and we see everyone oh, jump in actually. Can they make the most of it? Ooh, and they're down. 
that might have been a grave that mistake that that's from Barbie's dream house there. And as they pick it up, they will get lead. But can they get KO? No, they don't. But they push it to 15 and picked by Warriors have taken the ascendancy that in this match. That was definitely a big mistake. They didn't quite realize that uh, two of the teammates have jumped, had jumped in and they weren't as up as they thought they were on numbers. Now Barbie's dream house looking to make a push. Hopefully they're going to take this slow. They do only have a minute left, but they will get overtime. And that that's going to be important. Especially that important. They, they, with, with, with a minute left, there is time to do this, but they will be wary that and look, look to rush it. But I'm sure that they can do it. Pulp back with the Stingray taking out the Rainmaker there. That's a great move. But they managed to pop it. And if they're quick, they could get this out before all team members are up. This is still it looks like in it's the balance. Two down. And they can get this, but they've got to 20 with just five points. With just under 40 seconds left. They can still do it as they've got pop. Can they push it? Yes, they can. They've got it to 11. Man, Raymaker for you. <laughs> You're never I'm really safe, are you? Just 20 seconds left. Thick, thick, thick five warriors are probably thinking, how are they going to get back into this? But they need to just bide their time. Use you use the seconds that on the rainmaker, as this will probably go into overtime. The rainmaker just needs, but they but they go two down. Needs to be conservative as a stingray, and I think Barbie's Dreamhouse are going to take this in the reverse sweep of two one, in this first round of the launch point draw cut. Yeah, that was a massive back and forth. Um. That's the thing about Rainmaker, it's very volatile. You can make very coherent pushes, but you can also make the most of a push that doesn't work. Getting points where and where you can, um, it, it really could go either way if you're not careful. Yes, and, and as you saw, um, and as you saw, Every person participating that in that match getting at least over ten kills. It was a very back 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 and forth match. Definitely, um, we will take a small break as we are waiting for the next um, round. This round to end, uh, we will be right back with you for round two.
Okay. Hey, we're back and we're going into round two now. Um, we have for you Water Resistant versus the Ink Panther. Uh, now, let me tell you a bit about the uh, players that are coming in. On the side of Ink Water Resistant, we have Daniel, Mark, Ghostation, and Turtle. And on the Ink Panther, we have K's Drop, Zade, and Abalonia. Yes. Drop attack my co-captain. I hope she top frags in this and, and carries her team to victory. But yes, Ink, Ink, Ink Panther, this is Group C of the bracket, and Ink Panther, um, they are behind in this one, that with Water Resistant having to wait to play their match. So this is their first match out of the tournament, and I hope that they're not rusty go, going into this. Definitely, fingers crossed for them. And as we have the first match being Clan Blitz on Piranha Pit, which is very, which is, which is to be honest, one of the very best Clan Clan, clan Blitz match that in the game. The um, that the map is very wide, is very long, so so any anything can happen. That a lot a lot of flanks that will happen. That I'm sure that a lot of sneak 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 pushes and a lot of jumps that will that occur. For sure. Uh, definitely. Another thing with Piranha Pit is when that when the t enemy team push in, you as a team need to get back in very carefully because it can snowball very quickly uh, into a pick after pick after pick on the side of the enemy team, and you're not able to get back in in time. So they have to be very careful and coordinated on their way back in. Yes, that and also um and also team. All right, and it looks like we have all our teams in uh, the lobby now, and we're about to get underway. About to get underway in this. I'm interested that to see if we're going to get maybe a baller come out, um, but the Nautilus that is favoured. And, and also very interested to see if we get to see some ink, ink brushes that for the, for the, for some for some quick quick points that I know teams teams love to use that the ink rail to distract that the back backliners that when making a push as well. So that'll be an interesting tactic going into this for sure. Definitely. I also find that uh, that on Piranha Pit, Inkjet is generally a very good uh, special to have. It can get across and up onto the bats and over the uh, ramps, which allow for height, which is always... Great thing for ink jets. Yes, ink jet will be very prominent in this as well. I'm interested to see as well wep weapons wise that if that if they opt opt to go with splat splatlings that instead of the charges that or that vice that vice versa. Do they go? Do they go back uh, without without that back uh, that as well? Which you can do that in clam, uh, clam blitz. So I'm very interested to see that uh, that the variation. Definitely. Just waiting for one player now, and we are about to head into round two, match one on Clan Blitz Piranha Pit. Teams are ready and interested to see what type of comps these teams go for. As we trek, yes, the ink brush has come out there from Turtle, which was expected, and we do have a CVS come out as well and as the ink brush is just running around collecting clams as they do filling in their rolls filling their roll in and as the ink armor pops off quickly 
and as teams are it's quite interesting plans. to see that uh, Turtles opted for an Octobush. Um, it's a lot slower in the run and goes down there, um, not being able to take out drop using a range on the inkjet on the brush. Daniel so pulls out a bomb, trying to stop that push so his teammates can get back in. But we don't see a power clam yet. They're not very that co coordinated going into this as uh, as the Nau uh, Nautilus jump uh, jumps out. Mid is very much that controlled that by that by water, water resistant, and as they all grouped up that to the right, they have sixteen clams to ink, uh, ink panthers five that right now that the caper has just gone down and ink, uh, ink panther that are looking to push and as they take out that the junior kind of get that power clam that and start scoring two down for water resistant but they don't have a power clam to push and they abort the mission for now it seems like they're not able to they're very scared to make a power clam it seems because um they have not, they've been able to push, but they've not had a power clam or had clams to be able to make something of that push. And I hope uh, this match is going to be a very high scoring one, but it doesn't look so that it might be that the first team with a solid push might take this one. And that the T-Tech takes out two, and it looks like Ink, Ink Panther that are ready to push this. That the Junior has six clams right now, that the Inkjet comes out, doesn't get any picks, but they still don't have a power clam. That's that's three times now that uh, Ink Panther has managed to get um, water resistant down by two, but not managed to push in with a power clam. And water resistant now coming out, taking two and pushing both Drop and Zade back into mid, trying to take some control here. Yes, and uh, Ink, Ink Panther did manage to score. But because that they took that so long, they could only get get the power clam in. They really need to that coordinate pushes. That this this, this just gives a ch uh, chances to um to wa water that re resistant to come back. That they do have that that the PE clam that are on on the, that their basket. That if they wish to jump as well, so they've just given that advantage that to water, uh, water resistant. And as Water resistant try to mount a push and they are as the hammer that comes out that from turtle takes out the junior takes out the nautilus and it looks like water resistance are going to try and take this but now. once again where is the pa power clam you'd forget but, this and it's called cool and, <laughs> and they have started scoring as well they have got it done all the way to 59 that can, can someone go back into spawn can he keep it over and they do have a wipe so they will be able to have to push this as, Looks like Daniel is pushing pro. back, trying to get the power cam as uh, water resistant. And as the ink, jumps here, they will be able to do it. And they have pushed it to 27. It, um, and water resistant have really taken an ascendancy in this. Definitely. But Turtle backs up there, trying to keep mid a little bit, but not lose his eight clams. Turtle being very that conservative now, that I'm sure that he's going to play. play, uh, play Play the role of being being that a nuisance. Get get the hammer ready that for deep deep defense and hopefully flank flank the flank around in the final minutes to close out this game for sure. We see the ink check come out again, but uh, it looks like Ink Panther are again trying to push without any sort of clams. They all have clams, but. They need to get a little coordinated to make one. Yes, and as... Abalania what? making one, but going down to that Booyah, which is unfortunate. Only two up on the side of Ink Panther. They can't make a push in now. They've got three in defense. Yes, and then it looks like what, what resistance that I've just chose to defend and see this game out. They don't need to overextend. They have that the that the advantage as as the, as the CDS that goes out that but Ink Ink, Ink Panther will will force overtime as well and they have scored but they need to keep it scoring but but they go two down and it looks like that is all over that in this first match and as the barrier goes up water resistant take this first round 
first match, sorry, in this second round of the Draft Cup in very commanding fashion. There were some def definitely some good pushes going on, but not so much on the coordination of Clems. Um, it's very important in Clems to make sure you know where your teammates are at. Yeah, of course, that and as that and as Dan, Daniel showing that on the re that result screen, really loved that map and combination that with sev seventeen kills, commanding that his team through. I'm sure. And as we move on to the next match, which will be zones on Skipper Pavilion, which is also a very good map for both teams. It People are, are, I find that people are very torn in it. You either love it or hate it. Um, it's definitely, I'm still not 100% on it, but that's the thing with the maps and mode combinations. Sometimes you just understand some maps. Sometimes you don't understand other maps or can't get your head around it, or maybe it's not good for your weapon, but let's see what these teams can do on that map um, and mode combination. Who can really take control of that yes, for sure and flanks are going to be very that important in this that in this round that as well and also if if a wipe happens that the back lines really need to take the ascendancy that in this and as the players are ready and we are going into this second second match that in this round between water resistant and ink pan for water resistant one up ink pan for can, can they win this and force a game three? And as we see a Hydra from Mark and Zaid going to his trusted K-52. You see Zaid taking the middle. They're going maybe for an early flank. Mark on the Hydra was rather interesting, but the long range weapons uh, on Skipper can really take control of the bottom. And we also see an aero spray come out on the side of water resistant. That's very interesting. That is a very interesting decision indeed. But they are that behind in this as as Ink Panther really do really do take take it to water, uh, water resistant as they should. That they are that behind that in this set. And they that they've got it past sixty, but they do have one person down, but they have that the pressure as as the high just caught a corner that on snipe. Three people pushing up on the aerospray in the mid now, giving an opening for the three players at the bottom to push in. Daniel up with the bigger and a hammer comes out. Can they use this well now? Water resistant really need to cap this and they do cap it but with two down, but it's a very commanding lead that from Ink that Ink 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 for that if they got that another wipe that I'm sure that we, we would we would be head heading into Match three, right, at the right, bottom right here now. still causing problems for water resistant and allows his team to come back and take the zone that was wonderful staying alive keeping his range on the octo brush and managing and was, to give his team an opportunity to come back in and that was a very good kill that from the inkjet there just 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 to get everyone out that uh, allow his team that to read that regroup that that the bigger ones that come out two down on the side of ink, ink panther they charging that the Booyah bomb pushing up, trying to apply pressure. Ink Panther just need to keep keep, keep the penalties going. That for water resistant that throughout that this whole uh, whole match that they can't allow to be in a two down situation, a three down situation, or even a wipe. Otherwise, that they may lose the big lead that they've got so far. And as they have capped it again with that that with with the score being 22 to Ink Panther and 72 to water, water, water Resistant with just under two minutes, two minutes and 50 seconds left in this game. Yeah, Turtle bringing out the hammer now, but not quite getting a pick, leaving Daniel on his own to deal with Kays, unfortunately. Ghost comes down from the top with an Aerospray and Bomb Rush. Can that take the zone on its own? Not quite. Seems like uh, Water Resistant are very, very uh, staggered at the moment. They really need to get coordinated push on, but they only have 10 points left on the clock. Doesn't look like they do it as they go two down. And it goes on the side of the Ink Panthers. Ink Panthers really taking a commanding lead. They obviously did not like losing that first match. And as they come back, that with, that with I believe, 
two two minutes left with a KO. Quickly, that dispatched out of water, water resistant to force a game three. Some nice kills from Case there. Um, Case from the checkpoint uh, team. They really um, managed to keep that bottom uh, as that all their teammates went down, but managed to stay alive and allow their team to come back in so they could keep up and take back zone again. Um, and as we move on to the final game in this set, another game free situation for you on stream. And as we have Tower Control on Hotel, New Albacore Hotel. Um, New Albacore Hotel is definitely an interesting tower map. Um, it, Albacore in general favours uh, the long range, in my opinion. It can be hard for a short range weapon to do damage but on tower control there's a lot uh, there's several more nooks and crannies that you can hide in and really take advantage of as a short range weapon yes that for sure and also the um in between first and second checkpoint going across that the bridge that and obviously um in, in karma can be that a real def deficit that between there as you can fall, uh, fall in so it may be interesting to see if teams do go armorless in this that in this match. Yeah, the Albacore along with uh, Camp Triggerfish, uh, you have to be very wary about your armor on tower control. Let's see what these teams pull out now as we go into game two, game three. Sorry, at a one-one situation. The Hydra is staying, but they have brought out the Lunar Blaster, and the K Rapid has come out on the side of Ink, Ink Panther. Yeah, let's hope um, the Hydra on the side of uh, Water Resistant could do some damage because they didn't quite manage to get in a good position last time and to really do some damage. K's with the early flank on Turtle and taking him out. And Ink Panther wasted just... no time taking out three of them as that as the Hydra's left to left to wonder what what happened that to his team as he jumps out. And Ink, Ink Panther really taking it and they have the first checkpoint down as the Stingray comes out, drop trying to get some picks, but she could oh, but she but she can't. But they have pushed it to to the second checkpoint now. Kay's going down there. They're very aggro um which can really throw off the hydra but thankfully now this is the chance for water resistant to push back but sage still on tower you need to get rid of him and allowing a jump in that might be difficult for water resistant to have to deal with k's on the flank with the hydra taking out the hydra there that's going to be really important for ink panthers to get another push back on unfortunately drop drop goes down to a bomb which means that push window has closed. It does look like that that the Ink Panthers have have discussed that and that that and said they need to take out the Hydra before they can even push that and try get a, get get a lead in this, which they have. That's four forty two. What 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 resistance still yet that to score that in this match, and Ink Panther taking the two two down, but they are still applying that that the pressure to this game they are relentless they want this set case really pushing with that stingray taking advantage of it and getting two picks uh, with the help of drop just leaving ghost with the ends up for on the far left there and case being caught unawares by the hydra that's a little bit of revenge there <laughs> Ink Panther again, two down, but they are still pushing that tower to basically where they did that before. And, and Water Resistant really need to have an answer for this if they want to take this step. They do. Right now, right now, um, Ink Panther just have all the answers to the test, all the answers, and it looks like that they may get uh, get 100 today. Water resistant now trying to respond. Mark on the tower holding it. They've taken down this drop, the sniper, which is going to be great for Mark. No uh, range to worry about. But 
but it's that short range they need to worry about their turtle going down there it's a wipe on the side of ink uh water resistant unfortunately they have um, two minutes left to try and take control and mount another push on the ver this very dominant match from uh ink panthers but that's good that they've pushed past the first checkpoint as well gives that gives them that a platform that they don't need to wait going to the second checkpoint they can just go that apply pressure have the back line that on the tower all three all three members just go gun ho but ink pan for really Definitely. pushing back get it back to 42 I'm... and as they push it to 40 40 go it go into the second checkpoint again two down but they still manage to get more and more points out of this push they do need to push tower. Tower is faster if you have a player on it. Mark now to, going to grab it. But the one down already, not managing to get any sort of control. They, they still have over a minute left. They can still do this, but they need to be calculated that they need to take out drop and they need to take out Zaid for uh, for, uh, for the armor. They, they, they don't need that to hit players that, that, with, that, that with extra hits, but they do need to try and get the ascendancy in this that we're just under 50 seconds left in this match but as the map says the it's very much in ink panther's favor so much ink down so much movement available for k's and zade and for uh Ablongia to move around you know is they don't have the control which has allowed uh, Ink Panthers to get to their second, uh, third checkpoint, sorry. Yeah, and they've got to the third checkpoint and it looks to be all over. But you never know that in Splatoon. That it's never over until it's over. Ink, Ink Panther pushed to 19. What resistance really need to get on this tower now that I'm forced overtime. Unfortunately, K's, I don't know if stream saw, um, but K's uh, did a lovely flank and Mark the Hydra was all alone on tower. They armoured up and uh, unfortunately pushed Mark off. That's, uh, you hate to see it denying uh, Water Resistant the chance to push back and mount a solid push to get them the win, but it's definitely a great flank and yes. a very interesting set. Yes, and for the second time, we have seen a reverse sweep again that the team losing in the first match, really coming back that and giving it to the, to, to the other team and Ink Panther take this 2-1, which will do them well, qualifying that for double elimination later on in the day. Definitely. Now... We have a couple of minutes to wait until the next uh, round is to start. Um, again, we'll take a short break and be back with you at uh, at 17 minutes past. We will see you there.
you join us uh, back for round three uh, of our group stage. We are going to be looking at 13 ways to splat versus the Splatoonies. Yes, we are. But first, I just want to give a quick rundown to everyone about the format change we have done for this draft cup compared to the last. Last time we did Swiss, but now we are going into groups. So the top three performing teams in each group will go on to a double elimination bracket with the best performing fourth team out of all the groups will also join. So teams who did not make the top three in their group still have a chance. They just need to rack up, rack up um, match wins and stuff like that to be able that to be a shot. And also we'll, we'll, that we'll never know if a fourth team that will be able that to win that the whole tournament they 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 can that still do it if they get through. Yes, it would be very interesting if we managed to get a bracket reset. Um, I have to say, uh, you and Wug did a stellar job on the uh, maps and mode combinations for the grand finals. It's going to be very hype. Um, Back to this round, we will be starting on Rainmaker Black Belly Skate Park. Yes, we are starting on Rainmaker Black Belly. This can be finished relatively easily, I'll say, if that if that if everyone coordinates well. But it can be a very hype match with with, with a lot of back back and forward. But this map and mode really re relies on team trust and team co 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 coordinations to get the job done. I would also say I feel like it's Black Belly Skate Park's um, combination I don't think it does very well on splat zones. The tower in the middle just seems to get in the way, in my opinion. Um, I think that's pretty much everyone's opinion, really. If if the layout that was like Rain, Rain, Rainmaker's layout, then maybe that would be one of the top zones matches. We'll never know. Hopefully, hopefully that if this map 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 does come come back, that is between three. Hopefully that the devs are listening and listening. We need that change. We need the tower away. Thank you. Yeah, can can we get rid of the tower? It's just it opens the map up so much more, and I do like the concept of it. I just feel perhaps it's too tall to really do what they to do damage the way the devs intended. Um. But I think that's why Rainmaker is so much better. You get a lot of nooks and crannies tied in as a slayer. And also, you can stand back in the suicide where, uh, for backliners. But we are going into the first match of round three now. Let's see what the comps these teams pull out. Three standard comps all around. Got the K-Pro. Got the Nautilus, got the T Tech. Um, the Splatoon is really going for that double inkjet composition that can be very well, very well imp 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 implemented, that especially uh, push uh, pushing to, to the right. Definitely. And if you pair it with uh, the armor from Nissan, it's going to help the inkjet so much. Splatoonies are now two down, just leaving Des up. Will he jump out? There we go. This is the chance for 13 ways to splat to make their push. Yes, and as Dragon really does need, uh, need, to, need to get that Stingray out, that to just um, assert that assert pressure for this push as well. Uh, JRK, that's Pariahs pushing up there, really putting the pressure on, but it's not quite enough leaving Jace with the Stingray out now. Yes, but a push to forty-seven isn't that exactly bad, but it isn't. But it isn't that the best push you that you could do that on this map? Definitely, it is on the right side. So if uh, 
13 ways to splat plays this well, they might be able to uh, force go down the right side. Yeah, but they sure. do let it reset. As the charger is taken out, and the case shot is taken out, but, but as well, 13 ways that to splat, taking command, that they do have that free down situation, and they are go going to go going to try that and push this to the right again. Jace just waiting on that her teammates that to try and make 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 this push po uh, possible, but she can't get off the wall. She is now there, but they but they are two down as she gets taken out in mid. Can Uzi get out? Not quite. Jace being uh, on the Splatarians on your team, uh, got quite a few of your teammates in the tournament today. Yeah, it was a hard ask to get them in, but they're here <laughs> and they are performing well, so a captain is happy today. Yeah, do your captain proud, we're watching. <laughs> Jace <laughs> getting a nice pick on uh, Des there, that takes down the Nautilus. Umi going in for the Rainmaker, trying to get that pick, but all teams are up now. It's going to be a matter of who gets the right picks first. Yep. That we're just under halfway left sent in going game. down leaving uh splatoonies armorless as yumi tries to make a push in there we go and that's a wipe on the side of splatoonies this is another time for 13 ways to spat to push and again um splatoonies that are really getting easily picked that they do need to sort this out that if they look to win win this match And as the Booyah Bomb pushing to the right, can 13 ways splat increase their lead in this in this match? And um, if the Rainmaker Pack gets taken out. I have to say the 13 ways to splat didn't look like they were supporting the Rainmaker very well. That led to um, Rainmaker dying and that's not really... Uh, we weren't able to make a push there because they were so far apart. But now getting some ink down, this might be their chance to extend their lead, which is going to be important because if Splatoonies get another push on, they may take that lead quite easily. And yes, 13 ways really have commanded mid for the whole time, but, they, but they've but they just lost it. But they do manage to take out the, that the Rainmaker and they are two up again. But it is a 3v1 situation, just the zap left. The zap is out, so it's an effective wipe and 13 ways really need to push this to to increase that their lead that and hopefully see this game out the charger is taken out and they are all coordinating on the uh, on the right hand side and, and and i believe this is going to be a, a very good push he's popping the stingray hoping to help the rainmaker out but no one's quite with the rainmaker there and now jace has to back up as they're being pressured again one good push from Splatoonies, here it comes down the right-hand side. Can they stop it? Yes, they can, but it was very close. Just up the hill, they would have lost that lead. 20 seconds to go. Can they hold it? They are two down. And it looks like they are going to and get there lead. Goes the lead. And this is what happens at Rain Rainmaker. If you don't take your chances, the, the, the other team just need one push and all your work is, is that is over. And as overtime happens, 13 ways really need to try and get the lead back and hopefully win this match. They're all pushing up that the T-Tech goes down. The pro Let's goes down, down as well. Just need to conserve it. Don't push that. You need to conserve it. <laughs> But, but she doesn't have the help, but can she get through? No, she could not get through. And Splatoonies clutch out this first match. Rainmaker is such a volatile mode. One wrong move and it can leave you, as the kill counts show, it, you can do very well, but if the other team plays better than you for 30 seconds, the, the chance can slip if you're not careful. Yes, Rainmaker is such an unforgiving mode. 
sometimes that it does not that reward that the best team playing, but all that matters is to get the results, like especially especially in tournament settings. And as we move on to the second match, we have Clan Blitz on Snapper Canal. Now, I, I never used to like this map, but quite recently, uh, Solo has taught me how to play it. This is what I was saying um, earlier about understanding a map. Um, sometimes it just doesn't click for you. And sometimes later down the line, perhaps it does. <laughs> So we're, I'm excited to see what the teams can do on this map. Um, yeah, yeah, for, for sure. The, the flank on the right-hand side is really going to be crucial that if teams that want to sneak in points as well, that, that could be that the difference between a win and a loss, I'm sure. Yes, and a cohesive push um, on this map can do a lot of damage. Coming up the straight, uh, it may not seem... Like a great idea, but a cohesive push can really push into that basket and can take control of uh, that court area and allow them to keep the push up. And as we just have five seconds left, and the teams are ready. And as we head into this second match, and I believe. It is Splatoonies ahead, one up against uh, 13 ways to splat, and 13 ways to splat really need to get get this match if they want to force them a game three in this set. And as the Rapid comes out as well, I forget that what special it is that on the Deco, I do forget I, someone uh, that in chat remind me. Yeah, I... I am at a loss. I don't see many Rapids come out. I'm very used to seeing the K Rapid come out, but not so much with the uh, other ones. Yes, and as we see that on stream as well, that is that the ink jet. So they have opted to be a bit more aggro, 13 ways to splat. Power clams are being built left, right, and center. But it's just if a team can, can get this push, get this push, 13 ways to splat, wasting no time. Chargers trying to help them. They, they really do need to push this in now. And as they have got it in, they are in a, uh, um, that 4 2 situation now. Uh, yes, yeah, Platoonies really need to push out together now. Unfortunately, two of their team go down leaving the Ely to try and uh, pick off some people, but it's not going to go well. Elites are now dropping, whether or not it's a great idea, coming up against the 52. And 13 ways to splat, just keep on scoring. It's gone down to 47, 44 now. So Splatoonies have really lost coordination. They just they just keep feeding. But you can't keep feeding that in this mode. You, you, you won't, that you won't be able that to come back. This map is also not forgiving on feeding. Um, dropping down into that court can be very deadly, as you saw the Ely to do. It can really leave your team in a deficit. A 30 ways to splat really take a commanding lead in this, scoring a 32, but they do have that high deficit. But if they can just that defend and keep cool, that they do have the have the that uh, the um, that advantage. Sorry, in this. And I'm sure they'll play smart and strategic going into this. Unfortunately, their Enzac goes down, losing them in armor. They do have two specials. Whether or not they'll push in with it now. Here comes the Booyah. Can they get some picks? Unfortunately, their baller falling into the water with that their power clamp. That is unfortunate. I don't know if the Rapid had much to do with that. The Toonies do do score, but they don't have that coordinated push and they are two down that they do really need to coordinate a big push to be able to have any chance in this. And they've just given 13 ways that PE clam as well. So 13 ways that can quickly take take the penalty away and keep on scoring that if they did that push like, like they did earlier on in the match. I 
I'm not sure if it was the best decision to pick the Elita that on Splatoon's um, side, it, 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 that especially that in that in the mode that like camp, the camp, the camp is that would move um, mobility. That is every everything really that in, that in getting that push. And, and as you see, that a flank as well. That we have a jump, thirteen ways looking to waste no time. Takes out the, the ends up, takes out the Elita, and they can push. And it looks like it might all be over here. That solo push from the 52 really did some damage, taking two people out. Des from mid, though. Jace pulls out the booyah before she can die. Can she get some more clams in to finish this game? Now it looks like it might all be over. They have five, but they don't have clams to, to score. Just the ends up left. This is one last chance for uh, Splatoonies to get on a push, get some control, get some specials, and do some damage. With just under a minute left, there is time, but they need to have map control, they need to be very aggressive, and they need to collect a lot of clams. But they that just keep two feeding down the two down. Spatoonies, unfortunately. Can they get it together to get... They've just lost that clam. They do need another one if they're going to get some form of overtime. They need to force this over time. They need to. They need to really make this push count. They can't afford to feed. But thirteen ways to splat end this, and they, and they take it back, forcing it into a game free situation in the set once again on stream. Um, it is a play all three, so they do take. Hey. Yes, that in group state is that I play all three. So even though that you lose the um, teams, teams that you do lose two one, that they still have a chance that to get through to the top cut. So it's not the be all and end all losing. And and as we move on to the third match in this set, which will be zones on Starfish main stage, which I'm sure is, which I'm sure if anyone got zones on main stage. In, in a tournament, they wouldn't be complaining. Personal experience with a, a Splat Zones on Starfish, you do need to push in together because you have the bats um, as you're coming back in and you have the higher ground, but the choice to drop has to be a team decision really you've got to drop together and push in together otherwise it's very easy pickings if you drop it out out of the bats alone yes and uh, and the zones map can be very small because there's going to be that, that a lot of flanks on left hand side and the right hand side and also teams teams do you, you uh, usually just focus zone no one else goes anywhere else. That the zone that is just a big rectangle that on the flanks add to the add to the play. So it could be interesting that to see what type of um what type of um comps that they go with that, that especially with every every op the opportunity that's a flank as well. They're definitely interesting flanks because the um you do flank on the left and the right, but they're not, they don't get behind the enemy in any way. You essentially come in from the side. There is no way to get, get quite behind the team because of the bats. But let's see what comes out now. And as the K Rapid comes out as well, and we do have a Hydra on the Splatoonies. But we do have a K Lugas, which does run in karma, so it's very interesting to see that type of support. And here comes the first flank of the game. T Tech from their attic. Enough of a distraction to allow um, Splatoonies to cap zone. Yep, but it's short lived as 13 ways to splat take back zone. as the Hydra goes down as well 
and the Glugas as well. 13 ways to splat. Really want to take this set. Yeah, Link's trying to push two players there. Probably not aware both of them were there. The T Tech again looking to flank. Mr. Hydra tries no. to push back into mid. Certain ways, I'm sure, are aware that the T Tech, but the T Tech does does pop armor. That uh, inkjet, inkjet, sorry, couple couple of that with the armor, but they can't that be able that that's a cap zone. 13 ways just laying down the ink. Um, armor does come out for Splatoonies, but they just can't seem to cap this zone. And 13 ways are really taking the ascendancy, really? even, even with one down. They really pulled out the special on the sides of 13 ways to spat to stop that and stall that zone so they could get as many points as possible. Capping it twice while all four members on the other side were up. But now yes. Splatoonies are counting. Hoping to get a pick here so uh, 13 ways can't push back in. Let's see what they can do. Bio comes out and it's the armor. Splatoonies really really need to go for it now. They're, they're, they're behind. But it is three, three, three minutes left. But, but on zones that you can't afford that to wait. You you, you need to take take the zone that and really take that, uh, that authority in the match. Yeah, to be down uh, to such low numbers on zones... Uh, it means you have to hold out a lot longer. The flank by the 52 takes out Des, the gogglers managing to take out another one that ends up, they armor up and manage to get a three down. The Hydra has to back up and might even need to jump out. Going back to snipe now. Saving that armor well. for one of his teammates. I've just noticed as well, that's for Toonies. Are running that a double arm, uh, armor comp, uh, a triple armor comp? Sorry, triple armor comp. Yeah, that's yeah, a running. triple armor comp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Just realized. On zones as well. That's really interesting. I think they're playing towards their slayer's strengths here, um, and I think that might have hurt them while they were trying to paint zone. That's how uh, Thirteen Ways was managing to cap the zone, but. It looks like 13 ways are just coming back in, trying to uh, get cap again as Basunis start counting down. A triple armor pump can work that if they chain it correctly, but the zap, that which which is the fastest paint in here, really, really needs to go uh, go first out and pop it and try to get it. So Spatoonies do take the lead of this, but 13 ways quickly that respond as the zone that is is in contest. Plus, take it, take it, take it back. And as the booyah comes out, can 13 ways tap it quickly? No, they can't. But they are down, and it looks like Splatoonies Sp Sp is about to take this set. And I believe they are, and they have taken this set two one. 13 ways could not get a reverse sweep on this one. Yeah, they couldn't take a reverse sweep, but it was a very interesting match. Um, uh, 13 ways definitely taking the zone a good couple of times. Um, if they had managed to hold out, and it might have uh, given them the win, but they couldn't quite push back in. The triple armor comp really did end up being like, the best option. Just, just for them that the tank hit the hits that, and also that they really did did feel like that that the fifty two was a was a main threat, that especially after the clan blitz match. Yeah, definitely. And that's it. That's it for round three. We will t be back soon in five minutes for round four, um, and we will see you there.
we are back with round four of the group stage. Um, we are looking at a very interesting matchup now. We will be going to My Little Pog Champ versus Shy Guys. And yes, Shy Guys have been very creative and they've all put a dollar sign in their tag, which you will see very soon. So proud of them for, for doing that as well. But yes, we are going into this fourth round in Group A between Shy Guys and, little, and My Little Pog Champ. And the map they will be facing our first on is Tower Control on Schellendorf Institute. Yeah, Tower Control and Schellendorf, uh, I feel after the rework was, I, I quite like it. You can do well pushing up on it. There's a very interesting way to flank. Um, and definitely for the backliners sitting up on the roof, see what sort of damage they can do. Yeah, and I do, in a weird way, kind of enjoy I do in I, I do in a weird way kind of that enjoy that the whole um Schellendorf T C very I was saying Schellendorf T C T C is is probably Schellendorf's best mode, probably in a weird way. I I would have to agree with you. Um I think everyone's entitled to their opinion, but uh, I definitely think it's one of the best ones on Shellendorf. I feel like Rainmaker and Clams, because of the long roof, um, it can get quite difficult because it comes a matter of uh, what backline can hold the roof better. Yeah, for sure. But and also, um, TC, TC Shellendorf take, does take that a lot of... Um... That a lot of thought that in the pushes, um, it's just I think it's weirdly balanced in an odd way. Definitely, we're just waiting for the teams to get into the lobby now. Um, before we move on, but let's have a look at what these teams have done so far. Both these teams and uh, shy guys managed to go, uh. Get two three O's and a loss to the sour apples going uh, one two, and my little pop champ has gone a loss to night bad leader. Hmm, I wonder who that's oh. a dig at. <laughs> <laughs> um, and they got a three O, and they'll be playing in the last round as well. So it will be interesting that I think these guys are definitely the strongest in their sets. Um, so it will be interesting to see what comes up. One of the strongest in their sets. And it will be interesting to see what comes up. These are going to be some hard matches. I'm sure they're going to be very entertaining as all of the matches on stream so far have reached a, a game three. And we hope that this set as well does the same and as we are <laughs> you, waiting on you keep forgetting players. it is a uh, it's play all three um yeah yeah so it, we, yeah, we it always is. go to the final one but it's a matter of whether or not it's a reverse sweep or not yeah and we do love seeing the reverse sweep um and as well um while the, while the teams are going in Obviously, if you are enjoying the stream and you want to know more about LaunchPoint, please do visit the Twitter and visit the Discord and come to chat chat to all of us. In, in. We, we have over 400 members in the Discord server, so you won't be lonely. You will always have someone to talk to, I'm sure. And as teams are readying up, and are, and are picking their comps and deciding tactics. I would just like to shout out the last minute, last minute streamer, Stan, for stepping in at the last moments. And for all the visuals you are seeing, please give me all the love you can for doing every, <laughs> for, for doing all the visuals. 
as you see, yeah, yeah, a, you'll like it. There are fair co uh, complications on my end, which means I haven't had to stream, and God bless you, Stan. <laughs> yeah, God bless Stan. Honestly. Stepping in. You saved the stream. <laughs> saved it. And I hope that the joke is so far. And as we are just just waiting for the last few to ready up, so we can start this round four match. I can't wait to see what happens. Um, the, some very strong players in this lobby. And again, if you'd like to see all the players playing today, uh, down in our panels, there is a link to a document to show you all of the teams and all of the players playing today. Just waiting for two left to ready up, and we are about to get ready to start this. And let's go. The first round of first match, sorry, of round four. And there are our backliners, Splatling versus Charger. And some rather standard TC comps. We've got pros coming out and the end zap. Some uh, Western TC staples there. Pro goes down already on the side of uh, the Shy Guys, unfortunately. And it looks like... Yeah, the uh, My Little Pop Champs have got a lot of uh, ink down and a lot of control, and that's three down on the side of Shy Guys, which allows My Little Pop Champ to make their first push. And it is very interesting to see that an L3D, it isn't that the first inkjet, inkjet weapon that you choose down on TC, but, but I'm sure that that player that is very comfortable with it and they can do very well. Yeah, thunder on the nose there. That's a wipe, uh, almost a wipe for shy guys. They're getting the chance to make their push now. Thunder all alone, unfortunately. Thunder it came second in last cycle. He came, um, played amazingly, and his win rate rate was off the charts. Um, so he's definitely one to watch. And as shy guys push the second checkpoint and they are look, look, look looking to take an early lead but the BR bomb comes and stops their push mom momentarily unfortunately my little pog champ is still two down so they're not able to fully stop that push only stall it and that's just Shep the snipe left and Surge going for that flank to try and take him out and as they get past third checkpoint, it looks it looks like it could be all over as as it trickles down, and they have won this. Shy guys take the ascendancy and are one up in this set. Yeah, after a great start from uh, my little pog champ, with the, all the control they had, uh, it managed to snowball into pick after pick, um, and they were very staggered in the end, which allowed. Uh, the shy guys to take their chance. Yep, a very quick first match indeed. And as we are moving on, I hope that my my little pop champ has an answer. And as we move on to remake our muscle force fitness. Now for Rainmaker on Muscle Force Fitness, it is it is just a very neutral Rain, uh, Rain, Rainmaker map. I mean, not a lot of teams that would pick it, but you wouldn't complain that if you got it, that it can be over that very, very, very quickly and it can get really messy on the right-hand side if you want to push. Yeah, definitely. Um, the right hand side is a quick early push if it's not covered. Um, and if the team you're playing against manages to 
realize what you're doing quick enough, they can get back and stop you around the 40 mark. Let's see what sort of comps they bring out now as we move into the second match. New second match, teams are ready and we are raring to go. As you see, my little pog champ opting to go with no backline, which is very interesting, and double armor on this. So we'll see how they go. It's interesting to see that uh, both sides have got a vanilla slosh. Um, you don't see that weapon as much, but both of the teams bringing them out. This looks like they tried to make an early push there, but didn't quite get far enough or any sort of control and that's three down on the side of my little pog champ it looks like they're trying to go for a bridge push i'm bridge switching push. to the other side the stingray helping immensely taking three of them out just dino left up in the bats there yep and shy guy is really taking this and really taking it up with ease and pushing it to 14 as they fall in the first minute And as you can see, my, li my little pog champ do have it all to do, but they do have four, four minutes left. So it's not that the end, end of the game that by any any stretch, but but it looks like that they may need, need a wipe that to take take this game, I'm sure. Definitely. They did well to clear out just now. They did get three of them down, but now's the time to get picks to get the push on. Thunder with the Rainmaker. Um, Hoping for some dodging and weaving to get us up into 14. But the Stingray comes out and the bomb. And I'm just wondering that if going with no with the back, back line was the right choice. But it looks like that they want to go full, full, gu full, full guns blazing that on this. I just hope that it was the right decision. Muscle Forge definitely lends itself to backliners. Um, but... I know you can also do it back panelists. It that it is possible. If your aggros can get up there and into the face of the back line. But as well with um that with them being being that behind that in the set as well, it may not have been that the best decision, but they may may have needed that to play play it safe, that I'm sure. Very but true they and, uh... gone for it. They have gone through it, and, the, and, and they have popped it, popped the armor, but they haven't collected it off yet. But I'm pretty sure that they look, they're looking for picks at the moment, that they may try to push bridge. That's one pick on the pro. Now, can they get some more? That Stingray is waiting to come out, and there it is, allowing Chai to go in there as the Raymaker was distracted, having to back up again into mid my little pug yeah, one back into one, defense one of their players really do need to take out that the heavy if they're going to have any any chance in this because they get that good picks that the right picks but the heavy that is just being that conservative buying his time making sure that the stingray is ready that i'm not you dying down, you can see shy down in the bottom biding his time managing to get two picks now facing off against Thunder while his team do the Rainmaker work. My little Pog Champ it is not over for them by any stretch. They can do this, but they do need to take out the Heavy as quick as possible. Definitely. After the first push, it doesn't seem like uh, Shy Guys has been trying to make a push. They are two down now, but do they know about the pro? But they jumped out. So this is their time to get some more picks before that push happens. They do and have good control in mid, which is which is helping them get on more pushes. And it is very that important, um, shy, shy, shy guys, every single time that they defend, and they take over that to the left, causing, causing Pog, Pog Champ to go all the way that background that and start, start their push again. But they are two, uh, two down, but they are three down, but the Stingray is going to come out, but they won't be able to push this. Can someone take out the Stingray? And they have, that they may have a chance here to get it. They may have a chance, but I'm not sure if they can. Took 20, 
25 seconds left. Can they push this? They need to. They need to gamble. They need to gamble. But the, but the try stops. Right. They are three down. Sorry, they have to pop and go if they would try. like to. Almost getting the lead there. That was it's so close. Deep. Unfortunately, <sighs> that looks like it's it for uh, my little pog chance. So unfortunate for them that they didn't quite manage to get the points they needed there. 15 to 14. Can they now get another push on? Is the question. Thunder and managing to, to get that. Stingray comes out. And they can't do it. That Stingray cancels it. And Shy Guys take the... The round. They take the round, yes. My little, yeah. Oh. My little pop champs do have the chance to get another point on the board, which will be great for them uh, in the long run. That was a valiant effort from my little pop champ. They nearly had it. But the slosher just came in at the last second and saved Shy Guy's game. And as we are moving on, it will be a clam blitz match. And it will be clam blitz on Marco Mart. And I'm sure everyone loves Marco Mart that will matter. That no matter what what mode it is. Yeah, Mako Mart is definitely a it, it's a map that's widely regarded as very good. You see it in all the map lists, it's a very good all rounder. It does, in my opinion, have some weak points because every map does that it wouldn't be a good map, I think, without having a weak point. There is no such thing as the perfect map. Um, but let's see what... <laughs> let's see what damage they can do on Mako Mart. Very short um, distance between the baskets on Mako Mart. Um, so... After a wipe, could allow for a quick push into um, the enemy's basket. And as teams are wasting no no uh, no time, and we are ready to go in this third game. Can can Pop Champ take a two one? Or are shy guys going to take this three and zero heading into the last round? And we see on shy, shy guys, they have opted for the ball point. And again, Pogchamp going back, back linerless on clan blitz, which you can do. This is better than that than do, uh, doing that, that on Ray, uh, Rainmaker. But they need to optimize this and that and do this that effectively to, uh, to get a 2 1 out of this set. Yeah, both teams uh, having two, one down at the moment. And. Shy Guy's going two down, but can my little pog champs make the most of this? They do they have a fair few bams, but Shy Guys are back up and fighting. The Inkjet comes out trying to get another pick, but someone on the side of uh, my little pog champ goes down. And pog champ in a 3v1 situation right now, just needs to back up. And a stray bomb takes out at the K shot. Shy guys just controlling the map, controlling mid, biding their time, collecting clams. They have 19 to the 11. But it's gone down. Bob Champ. That is a wipe. Can they make wipe. the push in? And they have, and they have drawn first blood. Go down to 60 and it is going down 54 right now. Not able, it seems, to get any more in. Shep needs to back out now. He is in a 2v1 situation, but can he get out? Not quite, unfortunately. Control seems to be swinging back to Shy Guys. They've had so much control um, on this map so far. But again, there is no point having that much control if you're not gonna score. But they have scored, but it but they have freed down that right now. My little pog champ needs to take this chance to take control and get some clams and get perhaps a stronger push on. 
the power climb has been made and it looks like we're about to see hopefully some specials come out but that's two Pop down on the side down, of yeah. Pop champ have or been I know. <laughs> better Pop, uh, Pop champ have have been better that in this round compared to the last two they have really taken it that the shy guys that and hopefully that they'll get that the reward with with a game win here Definitely, you see the Booyah coming in to, so they can hopefully follow in. Not managing to get that power climb in. Can Mesh get it in though? Not quite, leaving it to die with it. Could have got them the lead, unfortunately, they didn't quite see it. But they're taking the lead. Just getting the lead, but it's not a big lead. Now it's not a big lead, yeah. My Pog chance to take control again and push in, hopefully. Hopefully they can do it. They do have two balls here. Pog champ. That they are look uh, looking to push. But the inject pick, uh, takes out the ball point and the splash. Can they get this push in? Looks like that they might. And they do. Under managing. And they take another boot. The boot are coming out to follow up that push. Pushing them back with Tenta Missiles. A beautiful uh, coordination there. Taking it down to 19. Can they get some more? They're still three up. Taking down uh, Shy. And it looks like they could end this. They are very close to ending this. Can they do it? And yes, they can. There we go. That was nice control from uh, my little pog chance taking the win. That's re that might help them in the end win a perhaps a tiebreaker. So every game counts. Thunder popping off there, really taking the dub. Yep, and they've really put it back again. Every game helps in wanting that to qualify for double elimination. Definitely. So. That is the end of round four. We will be going to round five in five minutes. We will see you there.
And we are back with round five of the group stage, the final round. And we are about to see uh, Attack on Inkton versus Polyploid. Yes, we are. And this match in Group E can decide who takes third spot. So it's for the automatic automatic qualification spot in this tournament. And I'm sure both teams are looking to take this. Yes, definitely. Um, Holly Ploid it currently sits in front of uh, Attack on Inkton. Um, but it is... It could be either way. Could go either way with Polyploid just ahead of Attack on Inkton by just one point. They both have a 33.3% set win ratio. So this match is very crucial for who takes the last automatic qualification spot. If you would like to see the brackets, we do have it down in the panel. Uh, we are looking at Group E at the moment. Uh, so take a look down there. Also, if you would like to see all of the teams, they are down in the panels as well as our Discord. Yes, they are. And as we talk about the first map in this, it will be Splat Zones on the Reef. Reef Zones. I think it's probably one of my favourite double zoned maps. Um, I generally don't like the double zones personally, but on the Reef, uh, it is pretty good. You've Bridge is very dangerous. Jumping off the bridge with a baller or with a uh, splashdown it can really catch you unawares if you're underneath the bridge. Um, just things like that uh, make Reef rather interesting. Yeah, Reef is very interesting. That. And also back backliners do tend to be a bit more aggro since the congested space in zones is basically everyone's, everyone's vulnerable at all given points. So the backliners really do have to watch their flanks and kind of play almost like a midliner. That especially that if you're playing with with, with a splatling as well, that you 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 tend to get that a lot of aggro splatlings that on the reef. And as the teams are just readying up now, interested to see what what type of um what what type of um compositions that they go um interested to see that if we'll see um back uh, backline analyst comps as well. Very intriguing indeed. Definitely. Um on the side of polyploid, we have Sovelis is our current uh, cycle champion, number one placement. So it'll be interesting to see what they can do there. You see, well, it just um, and so this team is really just ready. They've all ready, uh, readied up that in the lobby. They are, they seem com confident they're going to take this for sure. Definitely. Also on the other team, we have uh, Bucket, who came fourth in the last. Uh, Launch point draft cup, uh, as well as Dali, someone uh, new to launch point server. Teams are ready now, so we will be heading into the first match of round five. Yes, the zones on the reef. Again, this is for the automatic qualification spot, third in group E. And 
and Dali opt in for the you know, that explosion shot. Which is very interesting. Very interesting, Chris. yeah. Solus on the 52 gal. And see Super on the snipe. See trying to taking control of bridge here. Is the broke pushing up, trying to push back, get a pick? That's an interest pick there. Causing someone to have to jump out. Not quite sure who that was as Bucket goes down. Special is ready on the side Dally, but he has to wait for his teammates to come back. Yeah, Polyploid really taking the the ascendancy that in this in this match. It's interesting to see how they how to keep that pressure up. Definitely. Now they're mounting a push uh, attack on Inkton, trying to take the zone. They managed to cap it and get the sniper off of the bridge, forcing Isabrook down into a 2v1 situation and have to use her baller. Sobel is doing some damage out the back, but getting taken down by Potato. Taking two with her, though. And for sure, Polyploid look, 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 look at the cap zone as well. But they do, but the zones that are in the contestion want a uh, piece that right now. Attack on team Definitely. Two. The, the uh, specials come out as they try to hold the zone. But it looks like uh, Polyploid manages to cap it back. They really need to hold the zone if they want to get some points counting down. And it's interesting that that as well, Daddy, on the um, on the that exposure with, with with the bubbles there, just 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 to add that a bit more that support that to his team, and and the uh, the the explosion slush, uh, slushes almost acting that like a blaster that can really pop those bubbles very quickly. Now it's just Bucket left in the zone, unfortunately being taken out, not opting to jump back. Sobolus goes to push up along with Dinah. Armor coming out, trying to mount a push and to get some picks as uh, Polyploid are on their way back. Sorry, Attack on Inkton are back on their way in. The specials come out on the side of Attack on Inkton, but X's baller does get cancelled, so he can't jump off the bridge and cap that zone. They do manage to take it, pushing uh, Dinah and Super back, taking those picks. But Polyploid do have a very healthy lead going into the second phase out of this match. Definitely, but attack on Inkton are counting down and uh, Polyploid need to do something just to cap or even take completely the zone so they're not continuing to count. They're making their move now as they get two picks on attack on Inkton which allow them to take zone. Yes, but Polyploid are just keeping the offensive up, not, not allowing attack on Inkton to score many points that if they have the zone keep they, they have to keep giving giving them penalties keep it going that and just keep the keep keep the pressure up as well as as they take two down and the, and and the penalty that will all, all surely that that be wiped, uh, wiped away and they will start to score now and it looks like that they may take this game yeah definitely with 10 points left uh there's not much that uh, Attack on Inkton can do. And Polyploid takes that first match, seeing the KO through. It was a very balanced game, but it's just them. Um, Polyploid took took their chances, played it smart, didn't want it, didn't want to over that extend. But I'm sure that uh, uh, Attack on Inkton, Attack on Inkton, sorry, that will have. Um, that an opportunity that's about bounce back that in our next match. And for our next match, we are heading to Tower Control on Sturgeon Shipyard. Um, another be interesting to see what bucket goes. Um, obviously, by the name, he is a bucket a slosher user. Um, and Sturgeon is very good for uh, sloshers in general with all the different. Varying heights with the snipe uh, and mid being slanted and raised. Yes, and I am very intrigued to see if Super 
is still going to opt to go the e elite or that or, or they'll or they'll go um vin vanilla charger for the for the stingray it is that is the tc that you you never know you never know that what team teams are going to throw out as the teams are almost ready to go And I'm very intrigued to see that Dali's going to stay that under that explosion or if they're going to go a background of this comp. Or if you can you, uh, use use the charge of that as well. You, you, you never know. And as the team's already that we're going into the the second round of this, the second match of this round, TC on Sturgeon Shipyard. Yes, yeah, so let's see if uh, Polypoid can take this win, uh, which will advance them to top card. Very interesting choice. We see the uh, Cherry H3 come out. A very underused weapon, uh, not considered the greatest. Yeah, the and Cherry H3. Of course, we have. That's quite a unique pick, but can do some damage. As most weapons in this game. They're, they can be really strong in situations, uh, in certain situations. You see now um, Polyploid trying to take that tower, make their first push. So if they've got a pick on Isabroke's uh, Nautilus. That's three down on the side of Ink Titan, uh, Ink attack on Inkton. And that pot push just seems to look like it's getting stronger and stronger with the Stingray and Sovelis pushing up with that 52. Yep. Stingray Only comes out for I'm really taking it to them. And that's another two down. Can uh, attack on Inkton pull this out? They're going to have to try. They need to get this round. Remember, this is for third spot. They can't afford to lose this one attack on Inkton. That is three down, thankfully, for them. Uh, now making a push out into mid, but they don't have control of mid. They do manage to get two picks. That will be crucial to make their next push, but someone needs to grab that tower so they can start that push as soon as possible. Yes. And, and it looks like that H3. window has closed. Yeah, the cherry, the H3, setting up that on the right, that with the bubbles. Really, really, really trying to be, be aggressive and push, but again, that he goes down and the ink jets come out and that and polyploy take him out. That was swift and that polyploy that again, um, fruit all one up that in this opting not to um, take the tower and leave it to the sniper there. Unfortunately, for uh, attack on Inkton, they weren't able to capitalize on that two picks they got into mid, um, and grab the tower. They do. Go two down again, allowing um, Polyploid another push. And Super Dare. And they get this match together. Super Dare, obviously, winning the Stingray fight as well. That is crucial in the push. That yeah, protect there, hiding, hiding that um, behind the wall, waiting, but he does get taken out. And the trash on coming in, gun ho in mid, but what gets what gets taken out. And that just leaves the charger on the side of uh, attack on Inkton as Sovelis and Isabrook push up again, being ruthless with the pushing. But if you notice on snipe, we have Bucket waiting, biding his time, managing to get the pick on the junior and get out of that beer, but it's now being pressured. Attack on Inkton just have no answers. Therefore, uh, poly uh, polyploid, but they need to they need to study. They need to get the answers, otherwise. And Sovlis they... comes out of that shark, get taking a pick and turning it again, giving uh, two down on the side of uh, Inkton. And the trash rush are coming in clutch, take taken out that the K fifty two. 
attack on Inkton really to get get a move on here. It seems like they just can't get the control that they need. Um, with their only real painting weapon being uh, the tri slosher and the Nort, because the H3 doesn't paint too well, but it would with its bubbles. And of course, the Charger doesn't as much. Body Bloid here just I saying know. that the waiting game, they don't, they don't have to push. They don't have to push, they just have to play play smart, play conservative, and as they do, that they take out take out three of three of that attack on the intern. But the knot is saying no. Takes out one but jumps out because he's in an awkward position there. This is Attack on Inkton's last chance to get some point on the board points on the board here. They need to get to that tower within thirteen seconds and it Bucket just went down so it looks like they don't have any control here, so they're not going to be able to make it to tower in time. They don't have the answer, and with the and the BR, comes to the settle BRC the deal. Polyploid here, effectively taking third spot in Group E. Attack on Inkton can only hope just to win this game and hopefully get that get that fourth spot and maybe get through that to double the elimination. And, and it just looks like that attack on Inkton just had no answers. They don't know what what to do that against Poly, Polyploid. Polyploid playing super effectively. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, their one chance to push uh, in that match, unfortunately, they couldn't take advantage of. Um, and the pressure from Polyploid was just continuous. They really uh, worked together really well, the uh, Nort and the K-52. to tag team that pushing up situation and really harassing both the backline and support players. Yes, for sure. And as we go into this final match, hopefully Attack on Nixon can get this win and pray that they can get through to double elimination using that fourth spot. And we go into a Rainmaker on Wahoo World. And this map really, that is really just, um, it's, it's very, it's not the first map that you picked up for Wahoo Worlds, that's for sure. That's for sure. But Rainmaker, is it, it's, Rainmaker on Wahoo World is it's like a marathon in in essence really you yeah, you 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 have to badge your time keep 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 going that for the uh, the the objective get get as much points that especially pushing on the left hand side here and as the teams are ready we are ready to get into get get into that the final round here uh, super opting for the remix. We remake instead of the charger, and we do have that ball point, and I believe, I believe that is Dali on the ball point as well. But very interesting to, get to see who get who, that he gets popped here. Um, attack on Inkton wearing a lot of object shredder, but they're looking that to get pop, shred that armor as well, and hopefully get get, get the win that they need. But to hopefully push push the dub, double double elimination here. Yeah, we see the jet come out, but unfortunately, that's not able to uh, subdue Bucket as he takes them out very easily. Both teams looking for an opening now, and it looks like uh, Attack on Inkton are two down, and Polyploid might have that chance to push. And Polyploid are pushing, are pushing there. Very, very that co coordinated as well as they push up the left hand side and they push it all the way up to 30 still counting down and it looks like that it might be might be game here 
and it is. And Polly Ploy take a commanding 3 0 in this final round. An attack on Inkton for the whole set just had no answers for them. Unfortunate for uh, attack on Inkton, but uh, a well placed, third, well earned third place. And in commanding fashion, indeed. Yep. And that is it for our group stages. Um, we will be moving on to the final stage very shortly. Uh, in case you were wondering, that was my lovely fire alarm. <laughs> but it's all okay. <laughs> Don't worry about me. <laughs> um, and we will see you for the final stage shortly.
And hello, everyone. We are back with Top Cut. We are here and we are ready to see who is going to go through and hopefully win this launch point draft cup, the second one. And we have two teams which haven't been on stream, which are, which is Form Musketeers and the Ability Doublers in Winners Round 1. And this will be a best of five contest. Uh, yep, and if you uh, have been looking at our bracket, we don't actually have uh, the bracket uh, we used for the first half. We have a separate bracket, which we've now linked in the stream. Um, so if you would like to see the bracket for the top cut, it is linked down below in the panels. And yes, we have and the and the first map we have here in winners round one is Spl splat zones on entry game, which again is a very good splat zones map. Um, that the fans do add that another element to the one zone map, and it will be interesting to see what what the teams go with today. Remember, it is a best of five and it is double elimination. So if you lose here, you still have another chance to get to grand finals and hopefully cause a bracket reset. And as we are just waiting for the, for the teams to join the lobby and ready up, I'm sure everyone, I am sure everyone here is going to see who is going to win. I'm sure everyone here has has um, favourites to go through and are supporting players and even teams that they find very interesting. And again, the bracket is linked in the, in the panels uh, for anyone who wants to see how the how their favourite team that are player that is pro pro progressing. Yep, we're just waiting for all the teams to join the lobby now and then we'll, we'll get started and underway for our double elimination top cut. So we will have the chance to have a bracket reset. Um, it'll be interesting to see if a team can pull through in losers and take it to the grands. For sure. And staff here are really hopeful of the bracket reset. It will be very entertaining. And I can assure you, it will be very entertaining. And again, Mu, what are your thoughts on, on Splat Zones, on Entropy Games? It is... Uh... An interesting one. It can take a while to get back into the zone. Um, and if in that time, you perhaps your team is wiped, it's a massive opportunity for um, your the opposing team to push up and really take control and stop you from getting back out again if they can take your plat. So we're hoping to see some aggro action. Um, as Antrovi, I feel, it tends to lend itself to. It definitely does, and and we are just waiting on everyone to join. To join, hopefully that you are sharing the stream with your friends and anyone who is interested in watching. Especially now we are in the top cut double elimination. And this round here is a best of five contest and teams are just in the lobby, readying up, waiting to go. Um, I don't know too much about the some of these players. Um, I'll be interested to see what sort of comp comps come out. We've had some interesting choices today. Some 
ones that we haven't seen, some unusual picks. Um, but as we go into winners round one, let's see how things go down. And we have Freon going for the mini, and we do see our first Tetris of the day. Looking to apply a lot of pressure, and the Zap and the Nort for the four Musketeers running Object Shredder. It's nice to see uh, the tag that the four Musketeers have got on. It's nice to see some team com com camaraderie. Um, and you're right, the first Tetris of the tournament that we've seen on stream, no doubt there are some Tetris players. Now, uh, it seems like the ability doublers are doing, as I said, pushing up, being that aggro, fearing on getting taken out on the plat, giving an opportunity for the four musketeers to go back in with that Booyah bomb and takes out the junior, so no armor for uh, the ability doublers. Now it is the turn of the four musketeers to get that aggro on and they've gotten the picks they need to get onto that plat trying yeah. to contest that tetra now yeah the the ability doubles are really being pushed pushed back now that considering that they do have the tetras that that the tetras probably are going to try and flank round they should you use the splashdown that effectively looking for jumps probably but their team is not providing them with it at the moment and not managing to cap out. there but it is still in contest unfortunately the four musketeers taken two uh, of the ability doublers down and it looks like they're managing to keep zone for now taking another two out they're, it, they're very staggered and the clock's ticking this looks like it's going for the four musketeers yeah, and the four musketeers do close it out with an emphatic performance in this first in this first round of winners round one, and they take and they take it one and zero going into going into match two. A very standard very uh, Western comp on the side of uh, the four musketeers as well. Yes, that for sure. And um and I'm just in interested that that to see that the the ability doublers being that being camped out that essentially not not being able that to push in that they tried that to cap zone mul multiple times but they just couldn't get it done. They were very staggered, which uh, they always seem to be in a two v four. Unfortunately, not able to get all their teammates in for one cohesive push, and uh, the four musketeers really took advantage of that. We're now moving on to Tower Control Skipper Pavilion. Um, uh, an interesting tower map, to say the least. Not very well favoured. Or Tower Control? It has to be a preference, I would say. It's a gen generally a preference. <laughs> tower Control on Skipper. Um, I do like that the matches which don't go past checkpoint two because those those do tend tend to be that the best that the best matches. So it is very interesting to see. And um and the four musketeers are already ready dialed that they know what they're gonna do. They are focused. They are ready to just get this free and oh and get to winners round two as soon as possible. The ability doublers here probably looking for a way to break the comp that uh, the four musketeers have built, trying to learn from what they have saw in the first match and uh, counter it in some way to get that dub. I'm sure and the teams are readied up and they are ready to go. And this is the second round in this winner's round one. And... It is TC on Skipper, four, four Musketeers taking a 1-0 lead going into this. Unfortunately, then... Skipper is a map that uh, will favour one side for the snipers. So you see that uh, Esper has chosen to go all the way down to the bottom as it doesn't favour the left side as much. 
definitely. And and um, the ability stuff is going two down here, and it is prime for the four musketeers to get an established push here. And as they reach check checkpoint one, that they are two two down. The ability doublers are trying to defend, and the four musketeers just can't seem to get for first checkpoint. But they do, but they do go down, and it is an effective wipe as as one jumps out and the ability doublers can mount their push now. Yeah, so you see specials being built on the side of the ability doublers and uh, Mayur and t being taken out. The Stingray pushing a theory off the ma off the tower, uh, stopping the push effectively and giving uh, the four musketeers the chance to come back in. Yes, Losing sure, armor, but... unfortunately, as well. They're uh, not going to help to their push. Yeah, th this this game is surely that in the balance. It can be any anyone's game here, but it seems to be the ability doubles that are just that are a bit more co co coordinated down TC as they are pushing back again. And they do try and push it to checkpoint two, and they are as as the inkjet pops off, but but couldn't get any kills. And the four muskets musketeers that defend that were just two uh, two minutes gone in this game. Everyone up now. The uh, four musketeers are probably going to be looking to get some picks. That's two picks. That would be great for them to stop that push. And it's just the knot on the tower. Can the ends up get the? Uh, kill on them yes they can now is their chance to take control of mid get some specials and make their push past their first checkpoint the inkjet coming out with the armor helping uh mayur in there yeah, the inkjet, uh, they managed to get it to almost checkpoint yeah they managed to get it to checkpoint uh two and take the lead just sneaking it out before dying uh going for the points but now it's time for uh, the ability doublers to respond. Yes, and they should be able to get this, to get this win. Surely, if they do def defend this, that that the four musketeers, what they are going down, that that they are seeming to feed, that the zap has pushed in by by themselves, but it looks like that they're going to lose lead, and they do, and the ability doublers looking to get the second checkpoint but it looks like that they can't and the four musketeers defend with just three points in this yeah and just like uh the ability doublers did to uh that's a two picks from the stingray that will be very uh crucial towards their push hopefully to try and take the uh win back for the third time in this match the jet really pressuring the snipe back. But the snipe manages to take it. And the lead's gone again. All down to that second checkpoint. And Mayuren manages to push it past the checkpoint, which will greatly help their next uh, push. The ability doublers need to answer back quickly. They this, do have a minute left. That's enough. It has. It really has. The, two, uh, the minute is enough to make a push to that second checkpoint. But it looks like... Uh, the four musketeers are keeping that pressure up and unfortunately uh, the ability doublers have one down and have had to jump out their charger two picks on the side of uh, the four musketeers this is looking very decisive the four musketeers really taking an ascending lead in this and they push it to 34 that the ability doublers don't seem to have an answer here but they have performed very well that in this match. But the four musketeers just continued to power the pressure on. They continue to try and push that tower and aggress it, even though there might be a chance. Now they're three down. That might cost them. They have got to 33, though, and they have the uh, second checkpoint to get past. So there is every chance they can still do this. They need to somehow... But that flank from Mayurin manages to grab the tower, sneaking away that win. 
stealing away the I'm chance dead. to make the push for a win. Unfortunate that they didn't catch that uh, flank, and it goes to the Four Musketeers. Four Musketeers taking the two over here. They had this game. This game was back and forth, but they had to fight, fight, fight for this win compared to the first match. But with the the ability doublers with it all to do, leading into this third match in 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 winners round one. And as we are just waiting to see, I think there might be connection issues, but we are that we are just waiting. Waiting and yep, yeah, and we are ready to go and we will be going to Rainmaker on Imp on Rainmaker on Inkblot Art Academy. Rainmaker on Inkblot. Very good map to play a Rainmaker match. Very good. Essentially, essentially the the middle's gone. They have an open space. Charges do like like to like to pick off that as soon that as pop happens. So it's very that important. Very very that important that when you get popped that you don't that you don't get picked off very quickly. I think we are just experiencing that some that's some di difficulties that between that the teams here, but we will be ready as soon as possible. And we are. And as teams are ready to go, we will be able to see if the four musketeers can clutch this out. And hopefully hopefully the ability doublers will be able to um will be able to um see and if they can do a reverse sweep in this round. As the teams is readying up, picking comps, picking comps. The four, the four musketeers, just looking to clutch this out quickly and go to round two and make it a very good day at the office in this round. A very good day. And as the ability doublers are ready, and four musketeers are ready, and we are ready to go. Ready to go in this winners round three. The four musketeers, two zero up in this. With the win this, and they advance to the winners round two. The ability doublers need to clutch this game to force a game four. And we have pretty standard comps all around. We we, we have we have some T Tech action, K fifty two action, and we do definitely that have charges as the four musketeers take pop. Um, we have seen a sub on the side of the Ability Doublers. Um, Jay Turd has replaced Salem. Um, and we're wondering how this is going to affect the comps here and whether or not the uh, the former Skateers can handle it. It does add that, that early push that, from that the Ability well. Doublers. The ability of being able to push it all the way to 47 and they pick it up again get to 45 and that's where they stop and they have a two down situation they need to re regroup gain mid back as, as the charger jumps out and the four musketeers are ready to mount their push yeah we're seeing the stingray come out hoping to get some picks with that managing to get one and 
also the 52 going down. This is their chance to push just yeah, the uh, north left. They'll be able to get lead off this, and they do. Managing to get the lead, but the question holds is if they had held out, maybe they would have gotten a good more points. Uh, but we'll see how that happens that changes things in the long run run for now they do have the lead and we're looking for the ability doublers to answer as their jet goes down yeah both both teams opting for early pushes so we'll see who will be able to cap capitalize that they they have shown that they are able to take to take that each other out and as the remake that, that goes down With just two minutes fifty left, that the rainmaker is re reset, and the the ability doublers are in a four two situation that right now, and they are just looking to get any picks and to push this all the way. The rainmaker did not see that the the the, the zap on the right hand side there, just being able to stop stop that push momentarily. Yes, and that saved them from uh, having two different even more. That was a lovely shark by there. Um, there ends up. Ayuran now trying to get some picks but not able. The jet comes out on the side of the four musketeers as VR comes out to try and take some picks. It does and perhaps we're looking for a push by the ability doublers. And, uh, and the ability doublers looking for a push but they are in a two down situation right now just hiding that behind that that, that stack pro pro providing jump protection but the inkjet is coming out to put to, to, to assert pressure but i don't think they'll be able to get a pick and they are down and they have taken three down and and the ability doublers are, are and there has been a dc opportunity oh yes they has been a DC. Um, the question is, what does this mean? Because they are in the lead. Uh, I believe it just... <laughs> I, I believe it, it may count because the time is below 2.30. Two we will check that if when the match is If the finished. Four Musketeers can, continue, uh, can hold this out, uh, they may be able to clutch this lead. They do have the lead. It's not a massive lead. But they need to play it safe. Rush stealing the Rainmaker, making it harder um, for them needing that pop. Mayura needing to back out now. Maybe that wasn't the best of plays. They need to play this smart now. And they need to be able to just clutch this out. For, uh, for 35 seconds left. But, but they do lose the lead now. Just by one point. And it is a hard ask at this point. But the four it is. They're gonna have to get <laughs> the four musketeers now down to three. Um, the flank there from J Ted really throwing the rainmaker off and getting the wipe. Unfortunately, that looks like a um, a win for the ability doublers. But we will double check. It was a uh, DC match. We'll make sure and let you know of what the result is in just a moment.
yes, the match does count. And we are going to head into this fourth round. The Ability Double is able to take that one crucial game and force a match four. The four Musketeers must be, must be very upset that they couldn't cl clutch that out in three matches. But they will have that another chance to claim this victory. Yes, they only need one win, which uh, will get them through to the next round. However, the Ability Doublers have an uphill uh, battle. They need to win two matches in a row to take this to uh, to take themselves to round two. It's all to play for. It is all to play for, and I believe that they are looking for a sub at, at, at this important time, the Four Musketeers. That it really is. Or, oh no, they've, they, they've got their team member back, and I'm sure they're just looking to not DC and just and just and just push through and win this and get to winners round two. But the next map up will be Clan Blitz on Port Mackerel. Yeah, Clan Blitz on Port Mackerel. Um I definitely think it's a good uh mode for Port Mackerel. Um it's not it can bring some interesting matches and definitely um, needing to make cohesive pushes to get in, trying to um, push your way in and cheese some clams uh, doesn't work as well on port because uh, it's so uh, boxed in. Yeah, for sure. Um, but, but it's very... That is favoured. Um, um, the the um, that the blocks that in the middle providing cover that and also um, shark sharking that positions that for players as well to be able to get picks that are really that assert dom dom dominance that when scoring. Definitely, nice I think well. it. It's going to be interesting for our backliners. Um, they definitely play a crucial role on Port Macro Clan Blitz for um, keeping that basket. I think it's the one sort of backline Clan Blitz map that really lends itself to a backliner. But as we are ready to go, team are ready. Four Musketeers looking to clutch this up. The Ability Double is looking to do a reverse sweep. It is 2-1 in favour of the Four Musketeers heading to this fourth match in Winners Round 1. And we are seeing a Kenza Mini on the Ability Doublers side of things. Very interesting weapon to pick. Yeah, definitely. Um, it does paint pretty well, which is nice. Uh, the... On the other side, however, we don't have as much paint. We have an NSAP and a Nort. But now just seeing who gets the first picks, and it seems Mayor and goes down. And it's up to the ability doublers to respond. Yes, it is, and we are just waiting to see to see if they can score. But the four musketeers go go down four to two four to one now and that's forced the ends up to retreat and the ability doublers can now begin to score that looks like a very dominant lead there as it takes a while to get back into port um and that's match that, that went by very quick The, last and the ability two doublers in, just, just able uh, to clutch it. Pulled the rug out from under us. So uh, we weren't expecting a complete uh, KO there. A complete domination, uh, I'd say. Yes, and ability doublers have forced a fifth match. We will be seeing uh, Zone's humpback pump track. 
this is and zones hump back palm track who who does I love playing zones and humpback palm track i'm sure everyone does it is going to be br central <laughs> Or the, the four mu- musketeers are very upset right now, lo- losing that game in, in that in that fashion. It, it it wasn't even close, but I'm sure they they can get this and clutch it out. That it is zones zones is very fa- favorable that for all that for all teams, but but. I just, I just can't call this that right now. I can't call this. I thought the four uh, Mus- Musketeers in the first two games were very dominant, very professional, and the ability doublers have just brought it back. That and after that Clam Blitz game, I just, I just can't call it at this point. Definitely, um, th- it would be interesting because uh, the ability doublers have had a sub. This might have rattled the. Uh, the four musketeers because the sub is uh jayturd or archie who did win the last uh last uh, draft cup the first ever draft cup he is as one would say reigning champion so that could have rattled them a little bit let's see if they can pull it together and take this win or if ability doubles doublers are able to get that reverse sweep they were looking for Yes, it was going that the mini that for Freon has come out again. And the, As... the ability doublers going with no, with no back, backliner that they're really going, going for this. And that zone is being contested that at this point that the junior that goes down and the ability doublers can start scoring. Um, interestingly, Fury on the mini is pushed up onto the plat and is contesting the uh, charger, trying to um, knock him off the plat there, which he's successfully done and pushed him into the path of a inkjet. And yes, it is with the ability doublers taking an ascending lead, and they are in a four-two situation. That 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 right now taking taking it to the spawn. Playing as much pressure that as two possible. down now. The armor comes out, getting ready for that push in. Really needing to take to take zone here. The bomb rush and the booyah, hoping to get some picks as well, perhaps, um, to really take control. The inkjet comes out, trying to take some picks on the left hand side. As we see Archie there, slightly going onto a little flank. Will they notice it in time? Under four musketeers can start to score. That and take take it back, but they have just lost zone to the ability doublers and the four musketeers go down very it, easily. Unfortunately, it was uh, Archie's flank that uh, took down two of their players and was the catalyst to the cap the zone again. They are two down on the side of ability doublers. This is a chance for uh, the four musketeers, but they are counting down on the side on the side of ability doublers. Four musketeers the really need to armor comes zone out. Now. They really need to cap zone and they do. This seems like a hard ask for the four, four musketeers, but we know that they can do this. They just need to coordinate specials, they need to coordinate call outs, everything that to try and stop stop the ability doublers. They get to 57, but they do lose zone. Yeah, unfortunately, they aren't managed to keep it as long as they would like. Um, but they do manage to take down the Slayer, Archie, and now are able to contest the zone. Hopefully to get some more picks and count down some more. And we do have just over two minutes left as the four Musketeers are in a 4-2 situation, a 4-3 situation now. And they are looking to apply pressure and hopefully they can take lead off this. The ability doublers armor, but the junior that gets taken down, they are really going for this now. 
that they feel like they they can win this here. They have just ten points left. Can they keep it? And oh, not so they close. cannot. That was such a close cap. It was almost not in time. They managed to take it back, but is it enough? They have a minute and 30 seconds left to get control again. Double is coming in clutch here. But the four musketeers do have time. They have time to get this back, but they need to get get there now. They need to stop that deep. The ability to double is run, ru uh, running away that with this win right now. The Booyah comes out and a pick comes out, but the ability doubles are counting. Can they cap the zone? No, they can't. The Bomb Rush comes out, but is it enough? It is, but they only have a minute left to take control. Can they do it? Just the naught left painting zone, trying to get zone, but the tent has come out. And as the KT2 take, takes out that the now we we... And just under 40 seconds left, can the four Musketeers do this? Or are the Ability Doublers going to do the reverse sweep? The specials come out and it looks like a commanding use of specials there. But not managing to get the pick and a Booyah comes out. That's three down on the side of uh, the Ability Doublers. Can they take down Archie? Oh. No, oh, that's a triple the from Archie. And setting off a booyah bomb. Archie coming in clutch, taking out three of them. And it looks like the ability doublers are going to take this. And Archie, their hero, completing the reverse sweep. And the ability doublers will move to winner's round two. Four Musketeers may have to start a loser's run. And what an entertaining game. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. And uh, we will be back in a, just a short while uh, for round two.
and we are back for winners round two. And we have water resistant versus oh, I've just forgotten water, water resistant versus I can't believe it's not butter. Obviously, we have seen water resistant on stream before, and new to stream for this draft cup is I can't believe it's not butter. Um, both of these teams winning their first round, um, Butter beating Shy Guys 3-1 and Water Resistant beating My Little Pog Champ 3-2 in winners round one. And as teams are readying up and we are going to our first match being Tower Control on Piranha Pit. Tower Control on that on Piranha Pit, one of my favorite TC matches. Uh, um, it can get very hectic. Um, first checkpoint is always crucial, and and if both both teams do have first checkpoint, second checkpoint is just as vital. Sometimes teams run run away with it. Other times teams really do try and try and clutch it out. And we, and we do have late late wins as well. We, we see a lot of sting raids, booyah bombs, and a lot of ink jets, especially. So it is very that important that teams choose a perfect comp and get ready for this match. Yeah, definitely. Um, I always love to go inkjet on Piranha Pit, and I was as I was saying when Clan Blitz came up, um, it's just amazing on this map. <laughs> that and. Uh, a booyah is always good as well for tower control. Um, and I guess armor if you want to uh, support your inkjet. I'm just building my own comp here. <laughs> <laughs> Acting like that you're playing, that's, that's what we love to see. <laughs> we do wish that we, we, that we were playing, but unfortunately we have to commentate and give everyone the hype matches. Yeah, someone's got to do this so you guys can play <laughs> we would love to be out there playing we love to and teams are ready to go remember this is winners round two it's still best of five and the first match being tc for on a bit water resistant versus i can't believe it's not butter who will take the first important match in this round And we see Mark back, back on the Hydra. Yeah, let's hope his team can uh, set him up for a good, um, in a good position this time um, against this backlinerless comp, uh, where we see the Nort being the only long range on the side of. I can't believe it's not Butter. I might just end yep. up calling them Butter because <laughs> that's a very long title. It is a mouthful, and we do have Glubus coming out from Free Melee, and I take this in intermission to be relentless, uh, be, be relentless, hashtag free melee, hashtag free, free, free splatoon. We will have our voices heard in our battle. And as we continue, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and as we, that as continue, Rose, uh, Rose loses out uh, on the tower to the um, junior. But they do manage to stop that push. Um, and let's see if they can get the picks. You've got two people down in the core on the side of water resistant. That can be quite dangerous. Now there's three of them. Daniel, they're jumping out. That's a smart jump out. He's almost got a booyah. There it is, waiting to stop tower. Although they are two down, they do take lead, but what can they do now uh, is the question. Can they get that checkpoint and, you know, uh, push it? A little further, hopefully, maybe get to that second checkpoint. Do you see the junior setting up uh, for another armor for his team? And I do see the um, that the Glugas almost almost being very very passive, acting, acting like that a, a traditional support weapon, which is very interesting. That considering that the Glugas that are pretty much the, 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 the last armor weapon people that would go, but it's very opted here. I feel like uh, the uh, Googlers have come back into... I've seen a lot more uh, K-Googlers recently, just um, coming out. Googlers are definitely making a comeback. 
as we see water resistant now trying to make their uh, their second push past that first checkpoint mark uh being harassed by the uh nor and getting taken out by the machine They're not able to get past that uh aggro. checkpoint mark almost being very aggro on the hydra no not really stay staying back and picking but they are push, pushing off that providing help for for, for their for their teammates as it, as butter are uh, 39 points to water resistance 80 with just half of half of the match still left to play and the tenters do, do get popped as well just uh, just providing that a bit more pressure but the splashdown takes out that the junior takes out that their armor option as well and now it is 2v2, um, but it doesn't look like uh, Butter is going to uh, continue that push. As they gang up on the Gogglers, the Junior going very aggro here. Popping that armor, getting ready for that first, uh, that next push. Let's see if they can get it past the checkpoint. And as water that resistant trying to get this first checkpoint that amount not a comeback that in this round and they do get they managed down. to take it three down but now unfortunately can they do can can they get this that they still have have the tower that in play hopefully they can clutch this out they just need to take checkpoint here that will get them lead and if they can get a good amount of picks, unfortunately that's a wipe, but they have managed to get past a uh, checkpoint. On the side of yeah, Butter's man. team, you're probably going to see them setting up for a push now, taking control because uh, taking advantage of that wipe. Yeah, and there's water resistant take take the lead in this, that we're just, twin, just over 20 seconds left. It looks like Butter need to do a very good push to get this to get this first round and they are and, and the out goes down but the pro goes down for water resistant it's a 3v3 at the moment this is the last chance for uh but uh, i can't believe it's not butter to get that checkpoint and it doesn't look like they're able to unfortunately getting taken out by daniel the caper and the yeah, first the caper match there just goes coming to in clutch. water resistant the caper did just coming coming in clutch. Um, I believe that they were down, but the caper just managed that to sneak that that and cl clutch it off a water, water resistant, and they go one up in this. And the next map mode combination we will be seeing is Rainmaker on the Reef. Rainmaker on the Reef again, still a very balanced map. Get, getting that first push over 30 is where every team wants to be. Get, get, getting that first, that initial push that allows you that to get map, that allows you to set, to, to, to set the stage that and control the game that, that to hopefully get this, that, and that's what water, water resistant that will want to do take take a commanding two two zero that and it's winners round two. And as the teams are readying up and ready to go, and we are ready, water resistant. I remind you, one zero up in this. In this winners round that round two can they get a 2-0 or can i can't believe that it's not butter shock us all and do and win this match taking it to 1-1 and we do see a splash and the glugas that is pretty much that i saying this that the same comp that, uh, that for butter here 
Yeah, let's uh, see who gets the pop. It's pretty important uh, on reefs to get the pop on the bridge because controlling the bridge is very important. I'm sure every commentator has said that at some point during the uh, when they've been commentating because it's a big factor of reef. Let's uh, look. So they are going in with a booyah, trying to get some picks. Um, using their specials now, which is interesting to get those picks, but their junior goes down, unfortunately, um, and it doesn't look like they're able to make a push just yet. And we see that uh, both the heavy and the pro uh, trying to fend off that inkjet. We've just a minute gone as well. No one, no one see, seemed to score. Everyone's just, everyone's just feeling that each other out, trying to see like, if, they, if they find find an opening to push this. As the Booyah bomb, that comes out, pressure's bridge, and the Stingray comes out as well, applying the pressure. Can they get some picks? Finally, they get the Junior down, but unfortunately, they're not able to take that uh, Rainmaker far as a bomb gets the Rainmaker. Um, this is looking like a very long stalemate. Yeah, that the reef that I'm rate ra ra rainmaker can be that like that, especially, especially that when teams opt 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 to play that the same sort of the sort of sort of play style. And that is two oh. down on the side of water resistant. This is the chance for I can't believe it's not butter. The pro coming in clutch there, Daniel taking a two down. But now is the time to paint up and get a counter push on. Yes, it is. And we are about to take the lead. And they are in a 4-2 situation now. This has been a very back and forth map, a uh, uh, match, sorry. No one has managed to make a solid push uh, and take the picks that they need. Specials have come out and, uh, and picks have come off, but they've not had the chance to fully make a push. So you see Rose Sharking on the bridge, keeping the control of that. The junior trying to contest it. And now two down on the side of Butter. This is their chance uh, for Water Resistant to make a counter push. Making that jump gets them the lead. And up the ramp a little bit, 233. Can... Uh, I can't believe it, it's not Butter respond. Ooh. And the steel! And they, have, they have the, the steel. And they have pushed it all the way to four. That was a very... And the, that was a very sneaky push there, and they've gone, and they've gone. Wow! The junior manages to get a, a triple on, um, I can't believe it's not butter, and keep that push alive, that ghost stole from them. That is Rainmaker at its finest. It is now 1-1 one, one as we go into match uh, game number three. Which is Clamblitz on uh, New Albuquerque Hotel. Clamblitz on Hotel probably not the, not the best um, map and mode combination that you can get, but you but you can make the most of it for sure. And as teams are readying up in the lobby. And hotel. my mistake, it's actually a uh, two nil to uh, water resistance. I can't believe it's bus not Button needs to respond in this match. Needs to get a reverse sweep if they want to take this to round uh, three to the semis. 
as we go into game three, let's have a look at the comps. Uh, new Albacore, I find, is very finicky, uh, especially on clan bits. And we see the hydra map that will be... to stay the hydra. That will be, uh, I think, on Albacore, that will be very difficult for. Um, I can't believe it's not butter to deal with because uh, of how much Albacore favors range. He's just going to keep that control. You can see him now on that left hand side bridge, keeping the control. And everyone's just focusing on the left hand side as of right now, just just trying to see that who's who's going to bait and who's going to make the push. As butter pop pop armor that that and try and um try and c collect some clams and just try to push on the basket and get an early lead as quick as they possible. Again, this looks like it. Uh, several picks, but not ever enough to make a move um, as we're a minute in and no moves have been made so far. The moves we've made so far just trying to keep... Teams are just trying to see if they can push and, and what resistant have just made this push and they are looking to capitalize on this, but they are two down at the moment and and it looks like all they can get now is an 80. A wise choice from Mark there, backing out of that, being a Hydra, not wanting to um, die and like get get back and really get set up for what could be a counter push. Um, control is looking very back and forth at the moment. No one's really got main control. Um, Just two minutes gone in this game. Sure to see if we can try and see if Butter can push back. Because reminder that they are 2 0 down that in in this round right now. Um yeah, they they do need to get a move on really. They want to make that push. But it's also got to be a good push. They don't want to just uh, get some clams in at the moment. Otherwise, it, it's not going to be a safe lead. They have to coordinate that push. And unfortunately, the Nort player goes down. And they're all bunched up on the right-hand side. Um, but as as it has been the last part, the past minute, um, picks are coming very slowly. Yeah, very slowly that the teams are there. In a stalemate for those, but most of this match, that, that, despite looks like the score. a push is going on now. Not quite sure who to give the uh, clams to, so unable to make that push. But Mark managing to get two players and another from another teammate. That's a wipe on the side. I can't believe it's not butter, and that that extends the lead for uh, water resistant and butter with it all to do now as that's what water resistant just keep on scoring I think Mark goes, sacrificing goes down, goes himself just for those yeah Mark sacrificing himself for those, those points but their teammates are nowhere near the basket managing to score even more getting it down to 10 jumping in with several clans now they're not able to finish it but down to 7 I can't believe it's not butter I've got a big hill to climb here with a minute to go Minutes ago, it looks like they may not be able to do it, but you never know. They do have a minute, but they need to collect collect clams, and they just they just need to co coordinate as best as they can to try and save anything from this game. And with water resistance staying dominant that are two down situation staying dominant collecting clams and they look to be mounting another push and i think they want this ko 
they have so much control of mid it's going to be difficult for um i can't believe it's not butter to push out push them back get some picks and try to score the uh enemy the water resistant now throwing clams passing clams putting them into water uh, no doubt to cap uh, amount of clams on the thing and it's just the junior left i don't think i i believe can't believe it's not butter just couldn't hold it there and it looks like it and it is over water resistant take winners round two three and oh and they advanced to win a semi-finals and what a commanded performance it was by water resistant their push was wonderful uh they managed to keep up the push um mark sacrificing himself meant the um basket was open for uh, a fair bit longer so daniel could get in there and sneak even more clams in uh it's it's a finicky thing, Clams, and sometimes you don't know if the sacrifice is worth it, but in that case, it, it proven to be well worth it. Yeah. We have finished early due to a uh, three due to the three O, so we will see you at uh in 15 minutes. There we go. That's the time I found it.
Welcome back. Uh, sorry for the wait, but we are back with the winners' semi-finals of, of the Launch Point Draft Cup number two, and we will be watching uh, Thick Thigh Warriors versus Cold Knights. Yes, and Cold Knights taking a commanding 3-0 win in the last round against Ability Doublers and Thick Thigh Warriors just narrowly beating Spatoonies 3-2. We're hoping that uh, that they will be able to pull out some wins here um, on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors. Uh, since we last saw them, they've done pretty well to get this far. This is the top four teams. Um, if you're interested in seeing the bracket, it is linked below in the panel, as well as our Discord and something else that I've forgotten. <laughs> it's been a long day. We're just waiting for one more. Uh, play to join the lobby and then we will get these matches underway. Our first map and mode combination will be Raymaker on Sturgeon Ship. Raymaker on Sturgeon, a very good map mode combination to start on. Um, teams will look to push to the top left as many of you know. But they do have three, three directions. You go to the right, to the left and also through the middle through, uh, through the sponge way as well. So it's very interesting that to see how teams defend and attack on this map. And as we just wait for the teams to ready up and pick their compositions, we will be starting shortly. Interested to see if teams are going to run Rainmaker. Uh, no, oh, sorry, not Rainmaker, sorry. Stingray or Booyah Bombs on this Rainmaker map. Just just depends that we might see like a remix of Vanilla Charger, a Vanilla, that, a, a vanilla Spatling. Just depends if teams want, want, want to go that without a backline as well. That is an option, but it's not favoured, that especially on this map and combination. Yeah, definitely. Um, it would be interesting to see which side, as you go up to pop the Rainmaker, you can go to the left or to the right. It'd be interesting to see who takes what side, because um, the first picks will come from what side you decide to go on. Whether you decide to take the quicker route, along with your teammates, uh, to get that quick pop, or if you go around to the other side to try and get a pick. For sure, and teams are almost ready to go, and we are in winners' semi-finals. It is still best of five in this first match, being great Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard. Interesting. We see a Hydra come out versus a Heavy on the side of uh, Cold Knights. Let's see who gets that pop first. Yes, for sure. And now we are seeing, we are seeing Cold, the Cold Knights get the pop and are trying to use that, that advantage, use, use, uh, use the pain as the K-Shot take, takes out that the T-Tech and Cold Knights are really looking to push now. Finding out any way that to get that to get that an advantage in here, but but the hydro that with the range push, pushing back that the tri slosher and the remix. The B are coming out from the remix trying to save themselves. They do manage to survive, but I don't think they've noticed the T tech behind. Unfortunately, locked. But and they bridge are is down, and left. they are running, pushing. They get to eighteen. The uh, brilliant RNG from the bridge there, taking, uh, allowing um, the cold knights to push to ace T 
15 on their first push. And that was a very commanding push, I will say so myself. It will be a hard ask for the Fig Five Warriors to come back in this pretty much. It is pretty much. It is a very strong push from the Cold Knights. You see now uh, the Thick Thigh Warriors will be trying to mount a push um, armoured up on both sides. Avoiding the Booyah, which is uh, was coming from the other side of the map, didn't quite see it from Pulp's point of view, but... Pulp surviving with this Rainmaker, um, but how long do they have left? Is the question on that pop, on that Rainmaker timer? They're going for the push now. With two down on the side of uh, Cold Knights, are they able to get it to where they want? No, just short. Yeah, just but short. They are... But they but they are coming coming back and trying, but they get stopped at twenty eight. Continuously getting these picks. Taking it to 23 is still not enough. And the, and the now not trying, trying to retreat before. there. Look, Unfortunate, that could have been their chance to push to uh, to lead, but they do have two minutes left to uh, mount another push just as good. We're just under two minutes left in this in this match. Thick, thick Fire Warriors trying to fight back against the Cold Knights, but the Cold Knights put, were putting up a mount of a mighty defense. Again, uh, the Thick Thigh Warriors taking those kills, um, getting pick after pick, but just not able to get a push on just yet. Just under a minute 30, the Rainmaker has reset and the Ascendancy is again with Cold Knights with their push to 18. But the Fig Fire Warriors do have map control and have just popped armor and do look to that to push back and hopefully take this lead as the, as the Booyah Bomb that disrupts the Rainmaker. The Rainmaker just narrowly avoids it. Watching Pulp on this Rainmaker, they really... Um... They're really good at manoeuvring with it. Um, have managed to avoid two BRs while holding the Rainmaker. Um, Pan Pan, they're trying to get a pick on the the, the tri slosher, but not quite uh, going through on that. With just 40 seconds left, can Big Fire Warriors find anything in this to push it to 17 or more? Can they get the lead? Or is Cold, Cold Knight's early push? enough to take this game. Unfortunately, uh, Thick Thigh Warriors are worth three down. Now, a couple of them coming from spawn. It doesn't look like they're able to get to the Rainmaker and burst it in time. Not with that line of descent fence. And you see the Booyah come out to pressure them even more. Just they need to get that pop. And unfortunately, they're not able to. Not. And the first uh, match of the semi-finals uh, goes to Cold Knights. Cold Knights' first early push was just enough to, to win that. But the Fig Fire Warriors did come back, but it just wasn't enough. And as we go on to the second match here, which will be Clan Blitz. It's on Inkblot Art Academy. Again, a very good map for Daffa Clan Blitz. Really able Daffa teams for when when they score to control that the plat that and be able to, to take a commanding lead.
unless teams are readying up that in the lobby. Um, Climblitz on Inkplot is a, it can uh, be quite a difficult map for you to push on because of uh, the choke points getting up onto the plat. Um, you do need a good special usage to get up there and make that push um, so, you, so you can really take hold of that plat. Yes, and as we are just 50 seconds left in the lobby and we are waiting, we are just waiting for teams just to ready, dealing with the tactics. And can Fix Fly Warriors find an answer for the Cold Knights? Or will the Cold Knights take a 2 0 in this? And as we are ready to go, teams are ready and we are in the match. Let's try and see the composition, see what teams are going for. We do have we, we do have that glue deco come out. Very interesting pick to see. And the cold nets going for a more traditional comp with the remix, the K-Pro, the T-Tech and the Zap. And then we have Pan Pan that on the Glugas, a very interesting choice here that the baller could be that effective push, pushing in pushing into to the basket providing jumps it will be very in, interesting that to see if we can if we can see if pan pan can can put that to great effect Uh, Cold Knights now built clams up, so looking to make a push now. Got the inkjet out and managed to take the gloggers down, which is going to help them. They got the snipe down as well. This will be their chance to push. Booyah comes out to aid the push. Can't quite get rid of the junior just yet. And in go the clams. Yeah, bang. Cold, Cold Nights again taking an early lead, 62. Can they can they keep scoring? And they do keep scoring. They are throwing in clams, trying to put it down. They do have um, a man that advantage as well, put, putting it to 50. But I don't think they could get any more in. But, but 50 is a solid push. Now Thick Thigh Warriors will be looking to respond. They do have a decent coverage in mid. Um, looking to use their specials to uh, push in now. Unfortunately for uh, Thick Thigh Warriors, Armano's flank was uh, stopped their push. But they managed to take down two. And this is their time to push. They managed to get another clam in. But... They aren't able to get anything extra to push to the lead. However, it was a good uh, push to start with, uh, start to start catching up with. And just pull up here, using that the scoped a variant that of the fire fin that just just giving them that a bit more range. Hope hopefully they'll they'll, they'll be able that that to get a lot more picks out out of this. Passing the clams now, hoping to make a push in. Cold they do manage down, it, but can they follow now. it up? Unfortunately, they're not make, able to make much out of that push, and the Gogglers dies once again, coming up for spawn as Armano looks to uh, make that push in with a BR, with a double BR. And now, uh, Cold Knights are counting. Can they stop? And they've got uh, Thick Thigh Warriors down to three. They're counting down with 11 clams and a jump in. The but jump. they're not able to do make much of it. 
getting that You're just not what, trying to do a uh, last dish, ditch push there, but it's... They're, they're pretty safe down at 28, but a very good push from uh, Thick Thigh Warriors can uh, take that back very easily if they're not careful. The Inkjet and Armor, they've taken three down, and now is their chance to push. Now is their chance to take lead. They need Clams. That gets them the lead. It does get them the How lead, and, and they're Cold still scoring. Respond. And they are still scoring as well, jumping and getting it down to 15. Cold Knights really need to assert map, map, uh, map control collect as lot, a lot of clams as they can and hopefully take this lead off that uh, that power clam that will take it that's a pl plus three so they will start start scoring in instantly that it's just a case of can they do it can they get the picks that the gluber has been picked Cold Knights do have specials at the ready but the T-Tech goes down they have 20 seconds left to try and and build a power clam that they do have that pit that a pity clam from at, at the basket at the at the at the ready and they are mounting their push at, at that double three yard push the glue goes down they do score but can they get it i believe they might they have 25 clams and a man up can they do this they, 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 unfortunately they a bomb them, taking two of them and down they have yeah. cold nights clutching out the victory and taking a 2-0 in this winner semi-finals they need just one more win to advance to the finals now we will be moving on to Zones Muscle Forge Fitness. Zones Fitness. A very Hydra favored map, I would say. They, they, they don't have to move as much and their range that can basically that control that the whole zone and even parts of parts of the opposition's um, um, street and and, and if I was them, I would that that's suggest using that the hydra gives gives them that another um, armor option. So the other so the other team, teammates that can go full a full, full aggro, pretty much that in the hydra that can just provide them um, in, in karma that they could go double double armor that as well with the zap, which is a very fa fa favorable combo on this on this map and mode combination. And teams are ridding up. They don't want to waste any time. Cold Knights don't want to waste any time. They want to get this dub and advance to winners' finals. Just one more, one match stands between Cold Knights and their advancement in winners' final. Uh, on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors, however, they have a uphill battle now. They've got to do a reverse sweep if they want to make it to the finals and we don't see a hydra but we do see th that that the remix and the charger come back i believe it is not the fifen it is the stingray variant so interesting to see how pulp puts that into play definitely um we also see an aerospray come out on the side of thick thigh warriors and pan on that aerospray, aerospray controlling the zone just looking for paint pan pan with the obvious weird picks that for weapons but they make it work yeah the interestingly really enough the um the curling bomb rush is was a great choice to get across that bridge. Throwing the bombs across that bridge really uh, knocked Oreo T off of their snipe. They've got control, a lot of control of the zone at the moment. But now the push is coming back in on the side of Cold Knights, but they're denied that cap. And the Fig Fire Warriors are really taking this to Cold Knights as as they should. They are too uh, too too low down in this. 
the Aerospray and Junior combination really giving them such a paint advantage. Can they hold this cap? Unfortunately not as their Junior goes down. But the question is, are they able to pull it back and get that zone back now? A 15 push is pretty much a solid push on this map. But they, but they need to, to avoid getting yeah, to getting cap, camped out. Obviously, obviously that the air spray doesn't doesn't really provide as much range, so, uh, so they need to be smart. But they are able to cap zone back. Pan Pan on the aerospray spray really taking such command over the zone. As soon as that's popped, all the teammates start painting and they take zone in a snap. That's now counting down their deficit, trying to get down even further, hopefully. Fix Fire Warriors seem to be comfortable and ready to take this. They do not want to go out just yet, but they lose zone at the Cold Knights. Still have half the game left to try and win this, that they still have time. And they will start scoring very soon. And now you can see the pressure being put on by Cold Knights. Really pushing up and trying to take it. Unfortunately, that is three down, and this might be the chance for Cold Knights to take this win. Cold Knights moving like they were just in second gear for half the match, and then they just turned it up and provided a mass amounts of pressure. But that's the problem when you go aerospray, that you lack the range. And you are losing some, and you and you are losing that the X factor. That's Cold Knights get it down to five, four, three, and it looks like they may clutch this out. But Zone is contested. Can they? Can they clutch it? They might be able to clutch it. Can they do it? Can Cold Knights? They have a chance. The zone is heavily contested. It's going back and forward. No one wants to give up. No one. That's two up. down. Unfortunately, and Cold Knights. Uh, a double. The a double means that uh, the Cold Knights have taken it uh, three and zero over thick uh, thigh warriors, and Cold Knights advance to the winners' final. It was very entertaining watching every member just paint zone. It was it was yeah. just going back and forward for, for such thick a thick knight time. warriors said, "We're not going down without a fight." Have an arrow spray. <laughs> <laughs> and as you said, Cold Knights advancing to winners' finals, and unfortunately, Thick Fire uh, uh, Warriors that will have to do a loser's run. Yeah. The next uh, match we will see is winners' finals, and that will be in five minutes' time. We will see you there. Um, we hope you'll be stay around to cheer on the teams. Um, yeah, we will see you there.
And hello, everybody. We are back and we are in winners' finals. And we have two teams who have been on stream before. Everyone who's been here from, from the start, we are now pushing five hours, 30 minutes. We have Water Resistant versus Cold Knights in winners' finals to book their place in Grands and go for the title. Water Resistant, we have seen them on stream and they won their they won their winner semi-final 3-1 against polyploid and as you saw the last round cold knights won 3 and 0 against fit five warriors in emphatic fashion and we are waiting to see if either cold knights or water resistant who will win and who will book their place in grand finals we are starting on Clan Blitz Anchovy Games. Um, what do you think about this map, Knight? Because I'm never sure. <laughs> Clan Blitz Anchovy. I, I kind of that I, I kind of think think of it as a baby Clan Blitz skipper, where where you can attack from two 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 areas really. That it's not as that it's not as big as Clan, Clan, Clan Blitz skipper really. Um, in in anchovy that you have that the window window that to push from and you also push from fan as well so it can be very tricky that to mount that a defense that you that you almost have to have to have to split up that and do a 2v2 that on window 2v2 and window that and 2v2 that on fan that it can get really really com a complicated pushing um teams teams do do, do love that to fake that their pushes when when they do push on push on window that as well that you can see bubbles come out it can be very tricky and the tetras are very strong on this map very strong yeah so we're just about ready and we're going into the first match of winners finals um let's see what these teams can do Yeah, so we are ready to go. Remember, it's still best of five. Mark staying on the tried and trusted Hydra. And we see the remix, but we do see a tri slosher and the junior. So we do have that a bit armor, but they are very traditional comps coming out today. Yeah, water resistant uh, electing to go with a double armor comp, uh, whereas uh, Cold Knight's looking more aggro. Already the junior's down, um, Shindu defending that window. It's very important to coordinate on this map uh, where you're watching, so your teammates know what's covered. As you see, Mark's watching the uh, fan, Daniel watching the their window. Cold Knights here, trying to find a way in, trying to get those picks. Try and get those specials off. They've got all four special charges. Booyah comes out. And will we see this push start now? Cold Knights just trying to get their picks. All of their, all, all of their specials coming out. For the backliners, that they pretty much have to that defend window that and use you, you use the crates, essentially, that which isn't good. That, uh, that in, uh, picking up ink. But Cold Knights take an early lead, pushing it all the way to 39 and counting down. Yeah, Cold Knights go in there with two uh, power clams. It's just Oreo T left. That's a wipe on their side. It's time to get some control for water resistance and mount a comeback push. Um, we're looking that already starting to aggro in, but it might be alone there. So not going to make much out of that push. Brio comes out in a hopes to save that push, but will it happen? Armano kind of pressuring Capro on Capro here. And it looks like Daniel manages to uh, win out that. Yep, we've just two, two minutes gone, and obviously Cloud Knight's taking the ascending lead, pushing it to 30. 30 is a tall ask. For anyone to come back on Crime Blitz on any map, especially this one. 
but if anyone could do it, water resistant can, and they are looking to push, and they have 28 clams to Cold Knight's 10, and they are looking to inflict serious damage and get back into this game. Definitely, they've been on the aggressive for a couple minutes here, and now they've got them two down, going in for that push, not taking out the uh, heavy, unfortunately, which is going to make it hard for uh, teammates to get in um, and follow up that push. Daniel waiting in the wings with another uh, power clam, just not able to get in there at all. Um, but they are biding that their time, that they still have two uh, two, uh, two power clams, that they still have 20, 28 clams in total, trying to get this as as they're pushing window, that the ten, ten to missiles come out, but they do go one down, and it is a 3v3 situation, and they go two down, and they're going to have to regroup now and save these clams, but they can't. They can only save... They've, they've actually lost both of them, and they're going to have to that regroup, and they also lose map control as well. Very disappointing that for water, water resistant, but they still have time that they know that they can control. They just they just need to break uh, break uh, break down that the defense of Cold Knights here. Yeah, Cold Knights defense very good. The amount of um, aggro coming off of um, water resistant, they they were really trying and trying, but uh, Cold Knights just got those picks. Uh, now it looks like they're ready to push. They have all four specials ready to go. The inkjet's being popped, hurrying that uh, Hydra, trying to get him out of the way. Not quite able Which to get the Hydra, left. but... And we're just a minute left. Cold, Cold Knights are looking to do a push, but they don't need to push. That They just... That, uh, and, and they've gone two down. That They already have 30, but I guess... Um, that the best type of de uh, defense is offense, but not not in every 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 case. As as the Hydra and the Junior that go down for water resistant, trying to make a push through window. Yeah, it's not looking good on the side of water resistant. They are um, very staggered at the moment, not able to get a cohesive push together. And uh, well done on the side of uh, Cold Knight keeping them staggered, making sure they don't have that opportunity to push. And here we go, 30 seconds for water resistance to mount that push. The Booyah goes in, trying to get those picks. It's now or never. <laughs> it is now or never, and I don't think they can as they go two down and he misses, and I don't think they're going to get this, like, this script, and that is is it cold knights take the first game in emphatic fashion they go one up in this important winners finals to book themselves a place in grands yeah it was an amazing opening push for uh cold knights and after that they just had to defend and they defended very well And up next, we have the one and the only Wahoo Zones. Wahoo Zones, as all launch point people know, used to be the most popular choice when we did drafts, causing staff to rethink a lot of map choices <laughs> going in. But we decided to reward whoever went into winners. As finals, and I believe it is also in grand finals, a chance to play on this holy map in launch point Wahoo Zones. Definitely a staple of launch point, um, very embedded in the launch point lore, per se. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have, a, I think, we do have an emote. <laughs> For launch point, we do. And uh, I wish launch we could point throw it up. I wish we could throw it up. <laughs> uh, but yes, both teams will know this map very well if they if they've done drafts ever since cycle zero of launch point. They will know every bit how to how to defend, how to attack, and teams are ready. They're not wasting no time. They know this map. They know what to do. They're not wasting any time. And we go into 
the second round here. Cold Knights taking a 1-0 lead into this. And this map will be great for Mark on his Hydra. If uh, his team can keep him safe and locked in the right positions, he can really do some damage. Now yes, it looks like Cold definitely. Knights are contesting the first pick of zone. But they are two down and giving the water resistance a chance. This is their moment. This is definitely a resistance moment to try and assert dominance that and get an early lead that and push back from from the that, that that defeat last time. Daniel catching a integral flank from uh, the K fifty two, stopping them from getting a perhaps a double or a triple. Um, all special to the charge on the side of Cold Knights. This is their time to push in with bubbles and two beers. But a B are in response zone. that keeps zone. That was. But there. That, I hope that was shocking. <laughs> that could have been I a very important it. play. Definitely, they managed to get it down to thirty-two. Unfortunately, they do end up. They did end up two down, so couldn't keep the zone. And you see, Ghost there uh, sharking on the left-hand side, making his move now. Two down, three down. And they cap zone. This is this is truly launch point moment. <laughs> this is truly Jeez. a launch point moment. This Jeez. is wow. Who zones for you? Everyone knows what to do. Everyone loves this map, and we <laughs> are here just enjoying every minute of it. Cold Knights now trying. They've got two BS ready and the bubbles. Let's see if they can put it together again and uh, get a cap. They are counting down on the side of water resistant. Can they keep the zone? The first booyah doesn't land. The bubbles come out. The second, the bubbles don't land. And a bomb rush comes out to seal that deal. That's their zone again. The water resistant are still counting down. They are down to eight, seven, but. But they're a man that can they can they cap this and I believe they will and they have won this. And it is a one-one situation, water resistant, replying to cold nights in again emphatic fashion, going them, you're not gonna win this without a fight. And it is one-one in winners' finals, just what you love to see. You see there, Mark getting seven uh, kills. It's not a massive kill count um overall, but integral kills. And Mark using his range, you know, on a Wahoo Zone, it's very important to know how to use your range well. Next up, we will head to Tower Control on Manta Maria. Tower Control, Manta Maria. Checkpoints are crucial, but the second checkpoint that behind the bunker is crucial. It can be a very good defensive option, but it can be a very bad defensive option, especially that with the ink jets coming over, coming over that the wall, it can be very intimidating and it is important and it's important to try and get get past that checkpoint as soon as possible. And teams are wasting no time getting ready. They want to be in grand finals. Definitely. Um one weapon I I know is Great on Manta Maria is the Dynamo. Um, I don't think any of these players are Dynamo players, so I don't think we'll uh, see that come out. I don't think we've seen any Dynamos on stream today or any rollers, to be um, a little bit more precise. Uh, no one out there repping the roller squad, unfortunately. And no Tetras as well. We've only seen one set. Yeah, we have. And we are ready entering third match in this winners finals we are seeing a trash let a comeback out pretty standard comps for everyone we see the splash on water resistance side and we do see stingrays for both teams coming out as well yeah we also see both sides have gone k-pro k-pro a big staple of uh tower control it's just it's accuracy and the booyah and the k-bro goes down on the side of water resistance 
the flank from the T Tech taking out Mark as well on the Hydra, giving them a chance to uh, push that a little further. Oh no, and Oreo T accidentally pulling out a uh, Stingray there. Probably uh, thinking he was still on the remix. That's a shame. Um, ended up losing out there. Those can be fine margins in wins and losses, especially this deep into the tournament. You see, a BR As come out just... trying to take some control of mid, because right now, Water Resistant don't have that much control. It looks like uh, Cold Knights are attempting to start a push here. They are, but no one's scored yet, and we still haven't... Um, about a minute gone in this win the winners finals match three scenario, and I and it is a three v three contest right now. Everyone's just contesting mid and seeing who will budge, who will give an inch. Now they had they uh, water resistant have control of their their plat on the right side, which they have just lost unfortunately. Commentators curse. Um, but that was a good area to control the first checkpoint. And now you see they managed to get two picks water resistant and now I have started their push. Um, Got to watch out for Oreo T on the uh, splatling up on top of their bunker. That could be a problem as well as the two flanks from the left hand side. And it looks like water resistant have taken the ascendancy that in this pushing it past the first checkpoint. Go in, go in, go go into that trench, but 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 unfortunately they cannot. And mid is going to be contested once again with just half of this match gone. Who will win this pivotal third match in this winners' final? Yeah, we see the sing rays getting popped, and neither of them are managing to get a pick there, but. Two down on the side of uh, Cold Knights. Water Resistant are really coming at these guys, saying, no, we're not taking this sitting down. As they mount, go, it looks like they're about to mount another push on. Try and get that a little bit further. They take out the tri slosher no armor for uh, Cold Knights, as the jet pushes Markov Tower and takes him out. Yes, and Cold Knights just trying to find an answer to get the lead in this match. It's not a very big lead, um, and they're not at second checkpoint. This could easily be swayed in the other direction. Cold Knights just trying to get that first checkpoint, but Water Resistant putting up a mighty defense and as they look to try and assert more dominance that and get extra extra points that on the board and hopefully they can get this water resistant now uh two down this is a chance for cold knights to um take some take advantage but unfortunately they go reverse it back. They go two down on the side of Cold Knights. The K Pro goes down on the side of uh, Water Resistant, which means no Booyah to stop that. You've got to rely on that Stingray. And out it comes, dominating that tower, getting people away. But will it be enough? They may need a Booyah here to stop another, another tower push. This is going to be potentially their last push as the bomb rush comes out. They they do get first first checkpoint, but they do need to get picks. It is a two v two situation. It is a it is two v one, and they a have a wipe. wipe. Water resistant take the uh, third game of the winners finals. Old Knight now needs to win two. And Water Resistant need one to get to Grands. Water Resistant really flipping it on its head right now. And Cold Knights are probably scratching their heads how they've let Water Resistant take the lead in this.
for our fourth game of winners finals we are going to rainmaker starfish main stage which is one of my favorite mapper mode combinations um as a slayer you just get to run rampant <laughs> Definitely. It's not so much fun for people on the, uh, perhaps, uh, backliners who <laughs> will get chased down by all the slayers getting up onto plat. But uh, if a slayer is able to do their job on a Starfish main stage, especially on Rainmaker, um, they can facilitate a great push. Yes, they can. And teams just getting ready to go. They do not want to waste time. They're just going straight into this. Starfish. Yeah, main wondering stage, if uh, wondering what uh, what Mark will bring out. Sorry, uh, whether he'll keep the Hydra on for the range, or if he'll uh, keep the Vanilla Heavy on for the Stingray and the mobility. Because in Rainmaker, um, I find mobility is very important. And he sticks with the uh, vanilla uh, heavy and Oreo T on the other side instead of opting for a Booyah. And Cold Knights gets the pop. Now we're looking at the flanks, probably waiting for. There we go. Uh, the T Tech on the side of Cold Knights trying to mount a flank through Junior mounting a flank for uh, water resistant. Unfortunately, the T Tech falling in the water. That's a shame. Yep. Omano now pressuring, pressuring the uh, heavy, and he gets that kill. And and they're just running away with it, water <laughs> resistant. They're getting as much points as they could. <laughs> 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 Trying to get as much points as they could. Just a 1v1 a Rainmaker. <laughs> Rainmaker versus an Arctic shot. <laughs> uh, Rainmaker versus uh, K Pro is not a situation oh, you want to be the Rain. You don't want to. Be the Rainmaker if you're versing a uh, Capo 1v1. And here we go. They are one down a piece. I think Cold Res uh, Cold Resistant? <laughs> Cold Knights will be <laughs> trying to make a push there, but go two down, so we'll have to back up. And that's three down. That's a wipe. They're going to have to take big a big advantage of this. Opting to go for the top route onto Snipe to bide their time rather than uh, taking the top left and going straight for the points. That's two I'm down and it looks here. like they're about to run. Ghost opting not to there might be wise if they can hold this out. But they are two down unfortunately. Ghost having to back up. Ghost going down to uh, Mono's uh, flank in the bats. And the junior on the side of water resist and really going some aggro. Just this is the time. Down. Yes, this is the time for Cold Knights to really uh, take control and push back. But again, that they do have a lot of time that there's still half, half of this game left. They, they don't need to push ju just yet, get good picks, get the, get the specials ready, and mount that a real charge. Seven, 17 is a, is a big ask, ask, but I'm sure they can do it. And flank, uh, the ghost backs out of that flank there, it's sitting in attic, but chose the wrong time to come out, having uh, the heavy go up in a beer. Wasn't that favorable to him. So we uh, see a little bit of a stalemate developing here, getting picks here and there, um, but not quite able to enough to mount a cohesive push on either side. Cold Nash just don't have an answer, but they are pushing now. But they get stopped by, by a stray bomb. I believe it was a stray bomb. Correct me if I'm wrong. It may have been Mark as well. It might be a, a, a combined effort. 
This is uh, Cold Knight's chance. The Stingray comes out, manages to stop the Rainmaker, and takes Cold uh, Knight's two down. Armado's flank on the uh, right hand side is not going to do much, unfortunately. Um, he was in a great position there and getting caught up by Daniel as he come, tries to get out of there. Cold Knights just have over a minute left to try and save this winner's finals and force a game five. Water resistant have been have just, have 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 just have just turned it into sixth gear. They have lost the first match and they've just taken the the ascendancy here. Hopefully, they can see this out and, and book a place into grands. Mark probably looking to build a uh, stingray now to try and stop any sort of push. They get up there. He goes. He jumps out. But is there enough in defense? There's the Stingray, there's the stop. But is it a bit early? Perhaps not as Cold Knights go two down. But are they able to keep this push alive? They're still trying. Unfortunately, the flank from the junior uh, puts a uh, stop to that. And it looks like Cold Knights won't be able to get back in. Let's see if they can do it with three seconds to go. That's it. Water resistance. Head to the grand finals. Water resistance in grand finals, and this could be something of an upset here. Cold Knight, pretty much the favourites to go through to grands, but they are going to have to drop to losers finals. The question is now: Will we see a rematch uh, in the grand finals? Will Cold Knights manage to do a losers run, take it from uh, losers, and uh, meet them back at the grand finals? We are now looking at the. Uh, we will next show the losers finals um, when that starts. Uh, we unfortunately don't have a time frame for you, but we will be back uh, shortly.
We are back with the losers finals. This team who wins this match will go on to the grand finals um, and have a chance to play against water resistant. We have cold knights versus thick fire warriors. Yes, it's a rematch from uh, winners semis. Let's see if uh, the thick thigh warriors can bring it this time and perhaps make an upset. Cold Knights have been a favorite throughout the whole of uh, throughout the whole of the winners bracket. So let's see if the uh, thick thigh warriors can pull it from under them. Uh, thick thigh warriors looking for redemption, losing winners semifinals to Cold Knights three and zero. Oh. They will be looking to book their place in grands where water resistant wait eagerly watching the stream to see who they will face and shout out to everyone in launch point who is in the general vc watching there is over 20 people and i'm sure it will go higher once we reach grands everyone vibing shout out to everyone in general vc watching the stream now here we go First match of losers finals. At Rainmaker on Muscle Forge Fitness. And we go in pretty traditional crump comps going into this. Let's see what these teams can do. Looking for the first picks. Our Capra uh, goes down on the side of Cold Knights and the T-Tech. This is a good chance to push, but Shindu sh sharking over to the left-hand side. The Nort player spots him, but isn't enough to stop him take out the Rainmaker. Um, can they keep this push up? Pan Pan going down, unfortunately, uh, not able to facilitate the rest of that push. They're still trying, though. They're still keeping this up. And they are still scoring, pushing it all the way up to 26, but they go two down, and that is a very strong push on this map. 0, zero 3 taking uh, it all the way up to 26. Uh, strong early push. Definitely would probably like to work on that a little bit more, get a couple more points. They're really bringing out the defense now, but they go two down on the side of water resistant, and it's just the naught. The Nort manages to take out the Pro and <laughs> the final player, and it's just the Rainmaker left. Uh, clutch hit. triple from Daybroom there. And just with everyone here just trying to contest the zone, that, that um, contest mid right, right about now. And you see that the Zap talking, going onto the Rainmaker and taking out like, the Rainmaker quickly and going for the now and just trade with the now and that is very good for Fix by Warriors to get that Rainmaker off. Pan Pan trying to get out of uh, out of that uh, odd spot there, but not quite making it. I'm on the K Pro now on the side of Cold Knights, trying to uh, facilitate a push forward to the right hand side. Um, There's just a little over half of this game left. Thick, thick Fire Warriors really looking for the redemption and really taking it to Cold Knights and Cold Knights. Right now don't have an answer, but they can try and push this and they probably will, will, will go that for lead here. They are trying, but that the Octoshop get, goes in but gets picked and they probably will that get lead. The Rainmaker just, just needs a path in. And it's just the Rainmaker left as the Stingray comes out to chase that Rainmaker back. They're so far out of place that um, they, their teammates jumping in have just been led into the traps of uh, Thick Thigh Warriors. Thick thigh worries in a in a 
odd spot now, uh, being two down. They might end up trying to make this push. They're not in a great position. Cold Knights managed to get that lead, but it is a three down, which is great. They do manage to make it a wipe as well, so uh, this is a chance to uh, make a comeback push in response. Yes, for sure. Fake, fake Fire Warriors really trying to get their lead back, and hopefully that they do, because they do look very good at in this loot loser's final. Unfortunately, that is a wipe. Uh, on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors giving uh, with one minute to go giving Cold Knights something comfortable to work with they've not got to do much they need to play it safe and defensive but taking it back into their bats whether that's a good or not place to the Shark from uh, the T-Tech player taking out two players, giving them a wipe with 30 seconds to go. That sounds almost definite at this point. Definitely. And Cold Knight's just keeping it in mid and just running down the clock. They have 20 seconds, but they have to make sure that they don't get picked as it will force on over time. Pulp pulling out the Stingray for the last ditch, trying to get the Raymaker. They need to kill that Raymaker. If they want overtime, they've got two down. On the side of Cold Knights, can Thick Thigh Warriors burst that Rainmaker? You need to burst it now, pick it up. Amount of, pu amount of push. And we have a little bit of 60 there. seconds on the Rainmaker. Unfortunately, it looks like there's been a DC on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors, which means. Cold Knights do take the lead. I'm not quite sure when that DC happened. Um... Yeah, we will check that and we will see. Lovely help the staffers will tell us and we will be able to inform the chat. It seemed they DC'd quite early, um, I didn't quite notice, but we're just getting word in now to double check things. Yes, and I think I can confirm that that, that game will count because the objective was part, pushed past 30 and also and also that the team which had the DC did play on, so the game w uh, will count. So that game will go to Cold Knights. Unfortunate for sure. And then we now we move on to Clamblet on humpback pump track. This isn't the best place to do a Clamblet match, but this is losers finals. We have to test every team, so we make sure the best team ends up in grand finals and gives us a, a good show. Humpback pump track does lend itself to uh, the sloshers, so I wouldn't be surprised seeing uh, 003 come out with the tri slosher again. Um, it's also it can be difficult to push uh, if you're not pushing all together you can go in from the right side through the long flank there is the possibility that you will meet a backliner if they are not out of the way just yet um, so there are a lot of uh, entry points that you have to think about both as a defending team and pushing as well because you need to be cohesive
Yes, and team is all nearly ready to go. Just waiting on one one person left. We're waiting on Shinju just to confirm what he's going. He's he's probably playing mind games. He already knows what he's doing. Just playing mind games, running down the clock. And the teams are ready to go in. Clan Blitz on Humpback Palm Drag. Cold Knights taking this one and oh. Can they take a commanding two of oh, and force Thick Fire Warriors to do a reverse sweep in this loser's final? A chance to book themselves into grand final. Both teams. And here we go. We see a rapid come out on the side of Cold Knights. Uh, and as I predicted, uh, we see a try coming out, but it's not from zero zero three. It's from Daydream. Now trying to teams, teams trying to take control, uh, get clams, and get their first picks. Amana getting ganged up on there, and taking out Shindu while they're at it. Leaving just uh, the the heavy, but unfortunately not able to make anything out of those picks. The thick fire warriors trying to collect as much clam as possible. Cold, Cold knights pretty 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 low on the clam count. That right now only having only having three. And don't have much map, map control as thick fire warriors go for an early push but they but they are stopped both clowns but they get one in and then they get the other and they pushed it to 60. and zero zero three managing to sneak uh, one little climb in as well that could uh turn the tide of the match later on needing to get more clans down on uh the side of cold knights but the question is now can uh Thick thigh warriors defend this. Pan Pan goes down to the uh, K shot, and Omano starts bordering in. No one with that pity clam on the side of Cold Knights just yet. Cold Knights here just buying their time, get getting map, getting the clams needed. They do have eleven. The thick four, thick, thick five warriors zero, so they are looking to push. They're probably building a clam that they do have that the power clam that at, at, at their basket as as well. So that's an extra that incentive that that to push and create jumps. But mid is just being contested here. That the tries shot pushes, pushes that the splash. see uh, Oreo T on the f trying to flank but not quite uh, going for it. They are one down on the side of two down now on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors. This could be a chance for Cold Knights to push to get something going here. But Pan Pan denies that uh, power clam from Oreo T. With a minute oh, and 45 left, it looks like uh, the control is just uh, ebbing back and forth. Cold Knights still yet to score, or still yet to impose themselves on this match, but they are looking to flank the baller, has the power clam. But the tri are there just to stop them abruptly, but the tri that goes down, they are free to a situation now. And as the ball looks to go trench, and I think they will score, and they can start to throw in clams. But I don't think that they have enough to to, to, to get lead at this point in time. Yeah, unfortunately, there wasn't enough clams uh, back up to uh, allow for a push to the lead. Um, Thick Thigh Warriors had already taken back control of their basket before they could even come back with any sort of amount of clams. The rain comes out trying to push uh, Cold Knights back. Thick Thigh Warriors want this win. 
as I say, they, they go two down, which could cost them... Now it's just the jet. This is the time for uh, Cold Knights to start pushing. This is just, just over 20 seconds left. Can Cold Knights, that they do have a 3v2 situation at hand. They take the lead in this and take a 2-0. Or are Fick Fire Warriors going to take their first game off of Cold Knights? It's this one entire point. Tournament? One clam. Well, Cold Knights is one clam, but match. I don't think they're going to get it. The basket closes, and that's time for Cold Knights. That win goes to Thick Fire Warriors. Thick Fire Warriors taking their first game of Cold Knights all tournament. And making it hard for Cold Knights to get into Grand Finals. It is 1-1 one, one apiece in this loser's final set. We will now be heading to Splatzone's Piranha Pit. Uh, another double zone map. Um, um, again, I do I do like this double zone map, um, even though I'm not a massive fan of double zones. But like we've been saying, this uh, whole tournament, Piranha Pit and uh, Ink Jets, they're like best friends. Definitely best friends, like especially on um, back. That back line is a nightmare going against that injured on 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 the pit, and also that we might be seeing uh, ballers jumping from the from the belts, just jumping up and just and just and just charging up that as they that, that descent taking people that off guard as well. Definitely, just like Reef having the double zone, um, getting a great uh way to cap it jumping off the height and as teams are readying up for their weapons i'm interested to see if we'll see some double double jet comps i'm sure we might we did see a double jet from uh was it Thick Thigh Warriors taking the Nort and the T Tech? Um, yeah, I think it would definitely work well on Piranha Pit. But taking an inkjet does mean you don't have something to cap the zone per se. So long as you have a, a support player who can paint, you don't necessarily need something to take the zone, a special to take the zone, but it, it does help. So that would be the uh, caveat, running a double uh, inkjet comp. Let's see what these teams do now. It's still all to play for. 1-1. One, one. I believe I just saw a Kenza Charger. I did. I, I saw a Kenza Charger. And they are Very interesting. a bit more aggro for their backliners. And again, that the baller has come out for both teams. Oreo T already down. Losing their backliner could cost them there. And that's three down. Uh, Thick Thigh Warriors take an early cap. Can the Cold Knights respond... Uh, respond and take back the zone? They do get one pick on uh, Pan Pan, the T-Tech. And the inkjet comes out. Pulp manages to save themselves with that baller uh, from the inkjet. And gets the uh, inkjet's landing. That might have saved them. zone. that's Thick three down. Warriors. Thick thigh warriors are, are Thick coming thigh out hard. They want this. They want to they be in grand. They are essentially popping off and cold nights are bamboozled, they don't know what to do. They are trying everything, but the Thick Fire Warriors have all the answers for them. And there goes the uh, drop off the 
conveyor with the border as we also come in. Going that aggro charger, Pulp is able to get themselves out of positions and be a lot more aggro, even though he is a scope. Um, unfortunately, Thick Thigh Warriors are too down, and now Cold Knights are taking their turn. They're responding, they're saying, No, you're not having this. We're taking it. And the Cold Knights are really stepping up that their game now, as we know that they can. But they do need to take the lead here if they want to have any chance of winning this. As uh, Cold Knights manage to push back the uh, Thick Thigh Warriors taking another wipe, that's going to get them lead as Pan Pan comes out um, alone, now jumping back. That might have been a wise choice. That's lead, so... Cold Knights just need to hold off what a little bit longer, but unfortunately there has been a DC on the side of Cold Knights. There has what I believe they are still playing. Uh, it looks like Shin Dude has stopped, but yeah, the players have they stopped. Have stopped uh, yeah. We will. We will be doing a rematch. Just as we see, we are just trying to get this match back up for you and just to sort out the problem for the DCs. And as the teams are bridging back up in the lobby, just waiting for the DC to come back and we will replay Splat Zones on Piranha Pit. Now, this does give a dimension to to the replay because now both both teams know what they're gonna do, so they might have different different play styles going into this. So it'll be very interesting. Obviously, they have to pick up the same weapons, but now that they pretty much know how each other's gonna play so it's very interesting to see how how di this uh, this game is gonna differ from from the dc match that we just saw And we will just and just bear with us a minute. We are just sorting out the problems.
Sorry for the long pause, but we are back. We had a lot to sort out just now. Um, it has been decided that there will be a replay. Um, the DC happened before 2 minutes th uh, 30, and no one had pushed below 30 points. Uh, that is the reason for the choice of replay. Um, we have also had a sub on the side of Cold Knights. They have subbed out Oreo T, who unfortunately DC'd, um, to... They subbed out Oreo um, T for Esper, and they will be playing through this uh, Splat Zones Piranha Pit map again. And here we go for our replay. And yes, again, the dynamic will be very different going into this since the teams know what they're doing and Thick Fire Warriors going going three down. Now that that and Cold Knight's taking the ascendancy here in this loser's finals. Yep, so uh, Cold Knights have come out hot. They've uh, started on a 25, now uh, on a 70 point, trying to hold it. They've got two players down on, on the side of uh, Thick Thigh Warriors. Holding the zone really well. Pressuring those three players over to the right. Um, while Daybreak is uh, on the north trying to push in from uh, mid. They do have two down on the side of Cold Knights. Can... Can... I think by Warriors really cap the zone and they do cap the zone here. But Cold Knights were playing back. Cap a capping zone are taking out three. And that just leaves Pulp. Bad himself and Pulp gets taken out so they can really that control the map and look for a KO here. Old Knights here really trying to push this, really trying to get this score down. They want to end this very quickly and, and get to Grand. What but Thick Eye Warriors possibly... say no. Now it's our turn. They managed to get uh, the Cold Knights three down and take control. Now you see those Inkjet coming out, um, trying to pressure them. And we do have Cold Knights contesting that zone. Right now, picking off three, picking off three of the Fig Five Warriors and taking zone again with just underneath half of this match left. Cold oh, match just running the baller. down. And as the inkjet gets taken out, Cold Knights really taking the ascendancy and are about to start scoring and hopefully look for a KO in this loser's finals. Thigthai Warriors managed to take it back, um, but not got any picks to um, really get good control. They do manage to take down two of uh, Cold Knights, and they're hoping now to get some control and get the count on. Big Fire Warriors still counting down. They're in a 4v3 situation right now, but they, they've they just lost one. Cold Knight's hanging on, and they don't want Big Fire Warriors to count down anymore. There's one zone apiece right now, and Cold Knight's take the zone
with just under a minute left in this. Cold Knights are looking to start scoring, but they are two down as the Thick Fire Warriors then come back as the Inkjets come out. Both of the Inkjets come with the armor. Very effective. And I've taken the zone that with just over 30 seconds left. Can and the Thick Fire Warriors turn this game on its head? And they are two. They have picked two on the Cold Knights and they are about to start scoring. Can they get to 26 and take this with just 20 seconds left? They really need that second zone back. Now they're counting. Now it's going to be important. Unfortunately, the bomb rush comes out as 10 seconds left. I don't think uh, Thick Thigh Warriors are going to be able to cap that zone in time. And no, it goes to Cold Knights. Cold Knights take this replay in a 2-1. Headed into the next round of Cold Knights. In the next, they go to Grand Finals where Water Resistant have been patiently waiting. And as we move on to the next map, which will be which will be TC on the reef. And TC on the reef, again, a very good tower control map. Very good. Um, that the reef, just a very balanced, balanced map. It is very that imperative that that teams get the first checkpoint crucially, and these teams are ready. They don't want to waste time. They want to get to grands and they want to win this launch point draft cup. And teams are just about to start up and they are ready to go in this fourth round cold, cold knights 2-1 up in this if cold knights win they go to grand finals where they meet water resistant again for the chance for the crown traditional comms again from both teams And as we always say on the reef, uh, bridge control will be very important, especially for our backliners. Um, as you guys can probably see, we have had a sub on the side of um, Thick Thigh Warriors. Uh, Pulp has been swapped out for Jewel. Speaking of Thick Thigh Warriors, they managed to get a wipe and take control of the first checkpoint. Pan Pan really pushing the uh, Cold Knights, trying to get some p a pick with the... Uh, Ink Gen, unfortunately getting taken out, but that has allowed uh, Thick Thigh Warriors to get to the second checkpoint. Yes, and it has, but Cold Knights defending second checkpoint, but a 46 push is decent, but ideally the Thick Thigh Warriors would would like to get past second checkpoint as the Stingray is popped out, just, just to stop that the push and the Thick Fire Warriors just to regroup a little. It is a now 2v2, but little does Esper know there is a not hiding behind checkpoint one, and Armano has to uh, back up a little bit out there on his own. We see so many special charges, uh, specials charged for uh, Cold Knights. They're really taking control. You can see the amount of ink they've got down. They want that first checkpoint, and they want to get past uh, 
uh, the second checkpoint to be in a comfortable position, um, taking out Pan Pan, the Slayer from uh, Thick Fight with Warriors. Can um, Thick Fight Warriors get back in while they're being pressured by that uh, T Tech? The Stingray War comes out, and Esper wins that, allowing for a, a three down on the side of Thick Thigh Warriors. Cold Knights are looking to take this to Grands. They want this. Well, nice getting Esper so tech juggling point. that tower. But going two down on the side of Cold Knights, this is uh, another chance for Thick Thigh Warriors to respond. Unfortunately, the Nort getting caught out on Thick Thigh Warriors as uh, you see Shindu painting up, trying to get that turf to allow his teammates to move around more, uh, a lot more easily. And Thick Thigh Warriors with it all to do here. And they are pushing two second checkpoints, hopefully, that respond and force a game five out of this. Yeah, we still see the Sting War, uh, Stingray War come back, but unfortunately, uh, Duel gets taken down by teammates, and With just over a minute left in this cold night as it stands have booked themselves in grands to face water resistant again but the thick fire warriors have a response to this pam pam as pulling out the uh, the inkjet trying to pressure him trying getting a pick on uh, the k pro player which is going to be great no booyah to have to worry about just the Stingray. As it comes out, unfortunately, Jewel had used his Stingray, but uh, Debris managing to um, chase back the Stingray and allow his teammates to get to the uh, third checkpoint. Can they get past this checkpoint? It all comes down to this. They're almost there. They take the lead. It looks like they were going to a game five. It does look like we're going to a game five, but they get a wipe, and the Cold Knights take this all the way back around. This is going to be one hell of a push. This is for uh, the Grand Finals. This is for the Cold Knights to take it to Grands. They don't want to take this to a Game 5. Pan Pan going down on the bridge. Booyah comes out. And the Stingray comes out. The battle on the tower going on. They managed to take the Nort down. And that's two down on the tower. It's no just way. dual left. There is no it's way. It's a one v one. That's what it's, it's come down to. It's a tower, oh. and dual <laughs> takes it. Dual takes the win with the tap shot on the tower. <laughs> wow, what a wow. way to win! <laughs> they are probably popping off in this VC right now. And we are getting a game five in this loser's round. We are going the full distance. And we will be heading to Rainmaker All Eye Warehouse. Rainmaker and All Eye Warehouse. Teams are reading up very fast, so they make no time to talk as we go into this pivotal match in losers finals. That was truly an epic moment. Um, it, get, it goes down to a 1v1, Charger versus T Tech. Um, it being, and Jewel deciding to take the chance not to try and take the shot on um forgive me i'm not quite sure who the uh, star player is 
not deciding not to take the shot and take the tap shot route and wins out. What a way to win the fourth match to take it to a final um, uh, 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 game five. Here we go. This is the first time we see Walleye Warehouse uh, today on stream. And it will be Raymaker. Unfortunately, Pan, Pan goes down to the uh, pop. And you see the T-Tech on Cold Knights forcing a jump out to Jewel. Managing to push up into the bats already. Taking that top left side. Pan Pan shutting that down. It's just Esper left. Uh, on the side of Cold Knights. They've got to take this uh, opportunity. Unfortunately, the they aren't able to. Yes, the Cold Knights really being a bit passive. The Thick Fire Warriors have really taken the ascendancy in this, in this final match. Again, they will go to Grand Finals, whoever wins this. Whoever wins this does need to go to the Grand Finals. As Fake Five Warriors push it all the way to 35, and it is a 3v2 situation as it stands. And Cold Knights that respond and book their and book their place into grand finals. Can they do it? Is it possible for them to do it? As they are looking for a reset, Thick Five Warriors do do have control, but they are down two. And Cold Knights will, will, will look to push from this as the Stingray does come out. Takes out at the Nort. And Cold Knights are ready to push and respond. And they may push to the top right. It is very that unsure. If they can I'm or not. trying to take the opportunity there to get to the Rainmaker. But it's not quite working out. Um, and you see the Nort players dropped into the... Uh, crate area which can be a difficult place to be and thick thigh warriors want this they have taken the cold knights three down again and they look like they're about to set up for another push the thick thigh warriors have really defended this well they and have the it's the stingray that comes out trying to uh, get the rainmaker um, unfortunately, Jewel can't quite escape that. But Pan Pan just trying to push up, using the flank, uh, but not quite able to take out uh, Armano there. The Booyah comes out to try and take some control as Cold Knights are trying to formulate a push now. Two of them the go Cold down. Knights do have map control right now, and they are trying to just chuck away this, but they do lose three people in the process and Thick Five Warriors can now get control and play for reset. We certainly have an intense match now. This is for Grenz. After this, they've still got a battle to fight, but they want to be in that fight. Cold Knight's trying to make a move now, trying to get into that uh, amount of ink that they'd set for themselves, but not quite able to. Now looking to push it, gonna take the, the lead. Knights, Can they get the KO? Almost, they take it down to five. Yeah, on five. But, but can they get this pop? They are close to it. Can they do it? I don't believe they can, but but probably just a minute left. Fake Five Warriors have to go all the way back into Cold Knight Spawn to be able to get to Grand Finals. It's now or never for Thick Thigh Warriors. They have to get it all the way down to f four points and they need to get some control with 40 seconds left. They do manage to get two picks on the left-hand side. Can they make this push? Esper jumping back. That's a Stingray ready, waiting for the right time to push it. And Jewel trying his hardest to get uh, 
to slalom his way up to the podium but not quite making it that's uh the final player the not player down and it looks like cold knights will be going to grands to face against water resistance again water resistant again unless unfortunately that stingray was way too late but there you have it uh Cold Knights will be advancing to the Grand Finals. After an intense Game 4. Alright, so... We are going to restart the stream. Um... We have to give a massive, massive shout out to Stan, who picked up the stream last minute. I will be doing the last leg of Grands and maybe a gra uh, bracket reset. Who knows? We'll see. We shall um, see. So big shout out to Stan. Give him some love. Um, go and follow him over at uh, his Twitch, which is, uh, I believe it is Stan. TTC underscore. All right, we'll be ending stream there and it, st stay tuned. We will start up in just three minutes. <laughs>